Good evening, everybody. Welcome to this week's edition of the Pantheon Podcast. I am your host, Dark Eye Free, one of the EGL casters. And uh, today we have three get or three people with us today. We've got AJ on production. How are you doing, sir? I am doing very well, thank you very much. And as everybody out there who is a regular can hear, I've got a new mic. Woo! We don't. Yay. We no longer have pilot AJ. We're no longer at thirty-six thousand feet. We're now firmly on terra firma. Although I'm still the captain of this ship. Apparently so. If you go down, we all go down with you. Yes. <laughs> we also have this week the lovely Sushi. She's a regular on the show now, I feel. <laughs> well, I just missed like two episodes. And those, are, the, two, on... those two were two of the best ones, though. Yeah. <laughs> Which one? I missed the one with Captain Coach, and I missed the one with Hindu and Harris Cooper. And I was like, I'm so salty about that. The, the one with uh, Hindu was, was a, a bit of a. Uh, we had so many technical issues, it was unbelievable. And uh, we also have this week our special guest, possibly the, the youngest guest we've had so far as well, one of the, the youngest pros around. This is London Conspiracy's support captain and uh, shot caller. It is Emil Z. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing good, man. Thank you. Yeah, it's good to have I you on the show. He's just got a text. Yeah. Apparently he's got a yeah. text. Wow. <laughs> it was a tweet. It was a retweet from Sushi. Ah, there we yeah. go. Sushi, sushi's I ruined fault. it. I sushi ruined, ruined it. it. No. It's always you, Sushi. Yeah, it's always, yeah. always me. I'm the one that's like most unprof- unprofessional. <laughs> we don't expect like professionalism of you on the show anymore. Mm. Wow. <laughs> Shots. I, I have to BM people on this show. It's like when Toad's not here, I have to channel the inner Toad. So, <laughs> uh, so Emilzy, for those people who are not aware of who you are, uh, would you be able to give a quick uh, rundown of what it is you do and who you play for? Uh, I guess I'm a professional player. I play for the team London Conspiracy. I play in the support role. I'm the shot caller, which means I make the shots during the game. Like, let's go gold for you now and stuff like that. And I do the tag calling as well. And on top of that, I'm also the team captain. So, yeah, and I play for London Conspiracy. I think that's about it. <laughs> there you go. Actually, it's, it, seems, uh, it seems like the supports in a lot of the teams are the... The, the captains and the main shot callers, aren't they? I mean, yeah. you've got you've got Incon before he went to mid, which. <laughs> but see, yeah. now he now he's mid. That's completely screwed up my example because. <laughs> <laughs> I think Trickstank does it. Ira first the captain as well. Uh, let me just think. Kanye Life does the shots for Titan. Um, first he does the shots for Dignitas and so on. I think literally every support kind of does it at this it, point. It's fairly common, isn't it? Is it? Do you reckon it's because the. Uh, the support is the one not trying to get the kills, they're just going to set everything up. So yeah. let's go and go for this guy. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> support life. We don't get it's the kills. It, yeah, it's way, uh, what's it called? It's way um, easier not to like turn mission and kill for mm. support because you're probably not going to get that kill either way. Unless you're Shing Tian. Yeah, unless you're Shing Tian. <laughs> <laughs> whenever that gets let through. <laughs> well, whenever it gets let through, it goes into the solo lane. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, yesterday we did see it on the EGL where he went into support. Yeah, and I don't know how badly that went. I, actually, didn't they win? I think they went through a very bad start, but still managed to pull it back. Well, so we got to the point where Xing Tian was just unkillable, didn't they? So, yeah. uh, so running down what we are doing uh, this week, guys, uh, it's fairly... Our schedule actually is fairly light this week. We haven't got a lot happening at the moment. Uh, we will go through what we feel the patch uh, last, uh, sorry, this week has changed. Um, we'll also go through them quickly just to give you all a refresher of what was changed. Uh, then we've got a bit of esports news. We have the Rost Apocalypse, uh, which it's been dubbed at this point in time. I'm surprised. It's Apocalypse. I'm surprised it's not Rost Gate because everything's a gate. Well, no, because this isn't a controversy, so it's not going to be a ah, gate. Ah, okay, so it's not a controversy, but it's not a gate. Okay, the gate's been firmly firmly closed, so we're fine there. And we'll also be going into this week's God discussion, which, uh, unlucky for some, isn't Loki or Kronos. Loki will be next week, by the looks of it. Uh, it is Bacchus this week. No 30-minute rant from either me or Sushi, by the looks yep. of it. So, uh, my cat decided to jump in. Like, come so here. Everyone in Sushi's house is just... Not professional. Even nope. the cat. Even the cat. Nope. Even the cat. <laughs> then we'll be going down on what's upcoming in the community again. Not much. It's a, it's one of the, the lulls in the um, community at the moment. But we are approaching Christmas, so you just want to sit back, relax, just focus on what's going on with your family. And then we will have at the end our Q and A with the uh, our lovely guest. Uh, remember, if you do want to make a uh, suggestion for a question, want to post your question, I will post that in the chat now. Sadly, those of you who are not listening live to the show. 
are not able to uh, post questions because the show's already happened. Time hey. does not work that way, guys. Sadly, it doesn't. If, you're, if you are listening to this not live and you want to post questions for our next guest, be sure to follow Pantheon Podcast on Twitter. We'll make an announcement usually on Tuesday and also provide the link for the Reddit post where you can mm-hmm. ask the questions. Unless I forget. Unless you forget. I uh, usually forget. I usually forget and get reminded at like 9 o'clock in the evening. So yeah. I, I put it out on the Tuesday. It's fine. <laughs> so, uh, AJ, do you want to take us through what happened on Tuesday with this week's patch? And then we can uh, discuss what we feel has changed because of it. Okay, so quite a few skins got released. The Demon Soul and Ember Soul Circuit, Diva Aphrodite, as well as two skins were teased. Steel Scarab Kepri, which is your Odyssey Week 13. Which and is so of- sexy. It looks Can amazing. Can't wait to play it. As well as the Father Time Kronos, part of the New Year's chest, which drops December 8th. Isis got a Mastery Card updated, as well as voice packs for Demon Soul and Ember Soul, so Ked, Steve, Aphrodite, Steel Scarab, Kepri, and Father Time Kronos. Bakasura Soul and Thanatos got some achievements, so if you're playing them and want some of that sweet, sweet achievement points, you can start earning them. Clash has been extended with a bit of a drop in the gold per minute. The gold per five. Okay. Uh, before before it was eight gold per second, and now it's dropped down to six. So a bit less gold fueling, trying to help curb the well the snowball that was going on in the game. Did you not find with Clash that it didn't feel like the levels were the experience was going at the same rate that you'd expect it to? Because I was being able to buy stuff so quickly, but I just I was like, they're level. I'm, it feels like you're under level five for so long in that mode. Mm. Yeah, well, that's just my opinion. I actually haven't played Clash yet, so I don't know. Same! But, but, I'm also on that boat. But uh, it goes bowling for like a five-man mode, that's mm. like where you don't have so high XP spawning. That seems kind of like Joust, the old Joust. Yeah. You'd be level five with full build. It, you you pretty much could be. Yeah. Like, I, I remember back when it was um, eight gold per second, and I was playing, I think it was, I think it was Mercury. At the very beginning, I got a double kill, like straight off the bat, and I went back to base and finished up a Deathbringer. Wow. <laughs> okay, that's that's quick gold spawning, actually. That that was quick. That's ridiculous. Yeah. That's actually ridiculous. Like, admittedly, I got I got both the waves at the same time, because I'm Mercury, I could be everywhere at once. Well, yeah. And then I just went back, and it was just it was just amazing. Can't do that anymore, though. No, you can't. Uh, well, you can. You just have to stay out a bit longer. Well, yeah. Um, also being dropped in that last patch was the co-op difficulty medium was released. So if you are playing co-op modes, you can still queue with the bots as they were before the patch, but there's also a medium bot difficulty, which will test your skills a bit harder than the old bots. They're obviously in Joust 3v3, Conquest, and Assault. For those of you also who did not know, if you press VVVD, not VVGD, as it says on the patch notes. Uh, there's a bit of a typo there. To say ultimate is down, it will now show how many seconds it's got left till it's back up. And that's, that's, that's a... helped the ranked player immensely. That's a, a great addition. Yeah, I experienced that today. I was like, ultimate is down. Wait, wait, wait. We had this, I played arena game on, on my Smurf. And we were like, four, four, we had five points, they had six points left. And we actually won, but it was just so nice. I was like, I was playing Fenrir and I had no beats against the Nerys. Just spamming ultimate is down, don't go in. And then it actually said the second. So I was like, oh, they finally did this. That's so nice. It's a good quality of life change. It's been asked for yeah. for a while. So wasn't it apparently in uh, before this patch as well? They made yeah, it, they made it, was it, live in, it was in the last patch. It was in the previous patch, uh, 2.18. But it wasn't they mentioned in the patch notes and people were like, what? That's this this is awesome. Yeah, yeah. It, it had been requested for a while, and it's a great addition. Um, it's not really, it's not changed a lot because you've still got the the diamond in the corner of your screen saying how long until people's ultimates are ready. But it's nice to have an actual time Indeed. to look at now because now you can, without having to type and say how long you've got or get everyone in voice, you can just go ultimates down, fifteen seconds, and then your team will wait. Hopefully, they my, wait. my team doesn't wait. I also don't wait. Like you, you're you're like a, a Kepri, and they're like, "I'm going in." I'm like, "No, don't go in." And my ult's down. I'm like, "No, I'm going in. I'm going in." Why didn't you ult me, Kepri? Because my ult was down. Like, what the hell, man? It, that 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 just reminds me of what we saw at the Super Regionals uh, when we listened to in the Epsilon's comms in the one of the games against Paradigm. Hmm. And it was just three of them chasing away four, and that was like, 
uh, can can you go in? It's like uh, maybe I'm ulting. Oh okay. And it just went in straight away. <laughs> I'm ulting. <laughs> Thanks for the warning, guys. Yeah. <laughs> There's just stuff like that, and this VVD this VVD change is one of the biggest things to come out of this patch, in my opinion. Yeah, it's a it's it's a great great change, mm. great addition. Also coming out with god changes for Onher, Arachne, Bologna, Chiron, Hell, Kepri, Nuwa, Poseidon, Sol, Tyr, Shinten, Shibaloke, and Zeus. Most of them getting downward adjustments, but a couple of them getting some buffs, including Arachne and Onher. Arachne, Arachne longer loses the web trail when her target becomes CC immune. It was quoted as a bug before, but I can see this actually. It's, it's a buff, essentially. It and... is. It's essentially a bug fix, but it's a it's a fix which helps her a little bit because she gets movement speed on the web, doesn't she? So even if you were CC immune and you were running away, the web was still there. The only way of cleansing it is actually getting a jump off. So uh, I don't, does that even work? Uh, um, jump, you still follow jumps. Yeah, do you still, still follow, follow jumps? jumps? I, I think was... Athena ult and teleport is like the only thing it doesn't follow. Oh, okay. Like, it follows it, it, Mjolnir's too. Yeah, it yeah. does. Wow. Well, it's, in terms of teleports, it doesn't follow them across the ground. But the web sort of stops where they leave and then continues where they yeah. land. Okay. There, someone made a video about it. I didn't yeah, remember, I didn't remember that changing because I remember when they changed when they put it in originally. That's what they said, wasn't it? But if you yeah. jumped away, that it would remove it. But okay, okay. But I didn't. That no, no, just like goes really fast after okay. them. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know that. I should read the patch notes more often. <laughs> we do we do a show where I talk about patch notes. Actually, I never used to read the patch notes. I do now. I have to now. <laughs> so for all, mean... of you, all of you hell players out there, prepare to be wrecked by an arachne. Coming to you soon. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Coming oh. to you soon in the solo lane. Hell is just not safe. Anymore. Arachne in solo lane used to be really good. Yeah, she was. It. She absolutely destroyed Bakasura. Actually, the most hilarious point was you get uh, before you go to lane. Um, before you go to any of your buffs, first thing you do is you put your spider web next to the uh, their entrance into their lane, so they take longer to get in. The good old direct times. That's just yeah. It's me. I I remember this video on Les's YouTube. Like also we had the the wall trolls and the Enha one one versus Maggie Maggie Pocket where you like ring around the rosy. But there was this video where I think he pulled Shing three times. Like he walked out of base, he pulled him into like two or three whips three <laughs> times in a row. Oh, and I Shing saw was that. this raging. It was so fun. <laughs> that was that was older older acne, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, with the pull. Like, yeah, I saw that video. I was I was dying of laughter. <laughs> it was amazing. <laughs> yeah, all the old videos are just so much fun. I, I still miss the old acne where you could gold fear at level one. Yeah. There was a long period of time when no one realized you could do that, and then someone figured it out, and it was like, what? You can do that? Oh my god. So, if you saw an Arachne on the enemy team, you had to go to Gold Fury. Yeah. It was crazy. It was so good. Rip old Arachne. Rip old Arachne. <laughs> anyway, yeah. back to the... So yeah, I do have a question, though. Um, as somebody who doesn't really play that much high-level play, I don't really get to see the best out of the newer gods until... Until they're allowed in ranked, and I see them on streams. Uh, what have your thoughts been on Chiron recently? Because I know he's in ADC, so you're going to be facing against him in the support role a few times. Yeah, it, it's been rough, man. I've been trying to play some conquest, just playing some ADCs for fun. I would just went up against Chiron, and I like I got absolutely dumpstered in all my games. It's such an annoying guard, and I think one of the nerfs is like. Uh, no, it actually it didn't even get nerfs, but if he uses this one, which is called training exercise, he has this pool. If you get, if you don't react fast enough, if you're playing Rama and her, like anything with a jumper roll, it's going to cancel the jump. Let's say you're playing, I was playing Rama, I uh, rolled backwards and he, my f as rollout or whatever it's called, it just went on cooldown because I went through this cribble and I was just like, ah, and then you just get killed because he slowed us so much and... It's all this, like the crazy thing about him, right? You can not die, and if you get a kill, you revive. It's like a self-heal. Yeah, he seems really good. I think the nerfs are necessary, so we'll have to see how he looks. Now, I haven't played him too much, played him for like two or three games, and he seems really solid. Mm. So, the nerfs are for anybody out there who is listening. Training exercise had reduced damage. Um, basically, it has reduced 
by 5 scaling in each time. So from 70 to 290, now goes from 70 to 270. Uh, masterful Shot increased the cooldown to 14 seconds at all ranks and reduced the slow to 25% at all ranks. Where it was a cooldown of 14 to 10 leveling up and 25 to 35 leveling up. And Giddy Up fixed cancelling ability and still having no movement penalty. I reported that bug from the PTS. <laughs> it now just gets fixed. And fixed rank 5 training do true damage instead of physical. <laughs> <laughs> that has... That, oh my god. That ability has, that has the worst stuff. That yeah. Two yeah. bugs, both of which are remarkably stupid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I don't know. I don't know which god it was, but they had... An ability that was so stupidly oh no, it was Sol, who um had her too, just proc everything twice. Yeah. Yeah, because it went out and went back, didn't it? So he hit yeah. him twice of it. That was you had Telkine's ring, demonic grip. Luckily not Polly. Or Divine Ruin. Because can you imagine that? Not Divine Ruin. Um Soul Reaver. That's the one. Why Divine Ruin? I don't know. Why Divine Ruin? Why Divine Ruin? Maybe it looks a bit like Soul Reaver, I don't know. <laughs> no, it doesn't. No, the divine is like <laughs> it doesn't look even. <laughs> so it's like a book, right? So he was like yeah. a, a block it, thing, yeah. Isn't it? And yeah, and the round is like a, a down, an upside down pyramid. Down, up, yeah. yeah, pyramid. Okay, I don't know why I thought that. Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> right. There's a reason I'm a host and not the actual tech guy. Nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah there is. He he just sits there and I have to make him look pretty, I which talk. is a, which is a very difficult job. Is it even possible? Uh, no. You know, like, you met me in person over the weekend, it's not possible. Yeah, I, wow. I, I just had to see for myself. Yeah. Wow. Although, I have, I have to say, I am more attractive than Toad. Wow. Yeah. Oh, God. Come on. Shots? Like, Shots fired, man. We all, we all know I've got the best facial hair out of everyone on the podcast. I'll give you some. It's the most well-kept. I mean, I only see, like, I don't see the actual face cam, I just see the, the Skype <laughs> The guy. picture. The scary yeah. picture eyes. Skype <laughs> picture, I have some pretty nice facial hair, man. I yeah. will murder The Skype picture is going, I will murder you. <laughs> <laughs> it actually does. Yeah. Actually, that's, AJ, that's for, those, for those people who are watching and can't see your Skype picture, do you want to emulate your Skype picture to the viewers? Down to this, people who are listening to the show can actually see this, but I'll have to link dump it at some point. <laughs> Okay, I've, I've, I've done the post for long enough now. Okay, okay. let's continue. Um, Hell and Capri also received some nerfs um, in that last patch. Basically, Hell was dominating the meta. She had she changed the way the game was being played when she was in the game. Um, and, well, it's obviously that she's going to get some nerfs. Um, the Inspire Repulse, the sec third ability that gives you a heal and does a lot of AoE damage, had its magical scaling on the heal reduced from 50% to 30%, so it takes it a bit longer to get a huge heal online with power. And increase the cooldown on Repulse and Inspire from 10 to 12 seconds, meaning at maximum CDR, you can no longer chain the movement speed gift from it. Hey. <laughs> that, 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 that was incredibly strong. As if you just kept spamming it off cooldown on the heal at 40% CDR, you would just have your team move 10% faster. Constantly. Yep. And it was just it was just stupid, especially if you added Mercury on your team. Like he would punch you and kill you in yeah. one hit. <laughs> Merc kill man, Merc Afro. Merc just goes well with every healer. He does actually, because Afro gives him the passive from his form the kiss, passive. and that's like yeah, I don't know, eight sixteen percent or something. I'm not actually sure. It's, it's quite a bit. It's quite. quite Can you imagine a team with both Hell and and uh, Afro <laughs> attached to Merc? And then, like, oh. have the capy old on top of that. Oh, have <coughs> my god. It would just be so fast. He would hit you for, like, 2,000. Yo, you have Merc ADC, Kali in the jungle, you have Hell in solo, and Aphrodite in mid, and Kepri support. <laughs> <laughs> that would be nasty. What? That would actually be the worst early game team I think I've ever seen. But yeah. late game, yeah. you ain't late killing game, him. Though. Like, like, hey, like the, the, the enemy team would just get so many gold furies. Yeah. <laughs> but if if you make it to late, a late enough game, you know, Mercury's there. Like, is that your support? Oh no, it's not. It's, it's gonna be annoying. Yeah. yeah. But you you would never you would never ever draft that team. Would be like Cronus Afro Capri, which actually has happened, and that's <laughs> the most annoying thing. You just revive three times. Oh but yeah, like... that's a point. That's cool. That's a cool. I like I like that. <laughs> I need to try that. I think it happened in Super Regionals a couple of times. Like, um, 
where they call Paradigm the Electron, the Chronos ADC, and also like Afro, and the Capri as well. So, yeah, it happened there. It's one. It's one of the strongest three v three comps. Is when you draft Capri Afro and then a Hyper Carry. Yeah. Because it's it's just you can't kill the Hyper Carry at all. Nope. They will just murder your face. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Capri's got so many ways of stopping you from doing anything anyway, doesn't he? So mm. that's cool. Actually, the kiss is twenty percent uh, movement speed and twenty percent damage increase. Oh, oh. Well, well, it's, only, it's, it's only twenty. Yeah, it's only twenty percent damage increase if you kiss an enemy god. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. It's still so much, though. That's crazy. <laughs> it's actually crazy. Like, it's you only can... it's only when you think about it do you realize that there are some stupid OP combos. Well, I, I, I played, think. Yeah, I played uh, Aphrodite and Bologna today, and I was the Bologna. I just, I just wouldn't die. I th- and like me and Afro just wrecked. I think the most stupid combo is if you had a Najar yeah. uh, that just blinked into somebody and then with one crick just killed them because they had so much bonus power from everywhere. Oh yeah. Like yeah. it's it's actually disgusting the thought of that. <laughs> There's so many things. Um but to go to what we were talking about, um the hell and Kepri changes, wasn't it? Yes. Um Kepri isn't. Um, I I don't think from what we see, saw at EGO yesterday, Kepri's still a dominating force, but he can't be used as as anything. Uh, I mean, he can't be used in every situation, can he? He needs to have a team that works with him now, yeah. rather than mm-hmm. anything else. Well, well, in my eyes, he's very good at single target lockdown. But mm-hmm. it comes to a group fight, a five v five, he is just oh, I'm gonna CC one person. Oh, they they beat Stout. Well, I'm useless. Yep. <laughs> the main problem with the uh, Capri was that he actually brought new guards into the meta. You would see Sean Kui be so highly prioritized by teams, because Sean Kui really gets broken when you can just run into someone and kind of suicide bomb. <laughs> and yeah, that's like <laughs> I know that's kind of offensive to say. Too soon, too soon, man. Too oh, soon. But, but um, that's kind of what you do, right? You, you press forward, you just run into an enemy, enemy team, and you mm-hmm. don't care, because you know you're going to get revived, and you're going to come back. And then you got so much damage off, you would never play Sean Kui so aggressive, even though you would always play Sean Kui really aggressive. You, would, you wouldn't just, like, blink in, or, I don't know, heavily into someone, and just really just go really, like, really hard all in. Because you know you're going to get revived, you're not going to die. And that's why we saw Sean so highly contested at Super Regionals as well. So I think it's a nice nerf to Capri, because also he works really well with guards like Zeus, Hyper Carries, and like he works pretty much well with every good guard. And on top of that, he has like an amazing lane phase. So he has amazing early game, really good mid game, and really good late game. So he's just kind of broken, and it the curve is just like this. He goes from being really good, and then he's just insane late game. Like especially in this meta where you ha- where you're drafting a second support somewhere yeah. else, mm. yep. so much front line. Because yep. he, yeah. he then he doesn't need to even be in the front line. He can be back line yeah. healing. Yeah, that's yeah. what that's what you want to do with Capri. You want to play Capri like you play a healer. Just throw out your twos, uh, mm. root someone that's going for your carries, and just make sure your ADC and maybe your mid laner is safe, and then just be ready to ult your front line. Because they're just gonna be going so ham. Because they know they're not gonna die. He certainly seems a lot more valuable in a communicative 5v5 mm. situation rather than in ranked. Yeah, that's true. The way you counter Capri is that you just focus the Capri. If you get like so big pluck on Capri or Capri tries to dash in, you just kill him. Because even if Capri ults himself, he's so easy to kill because his hitbox is so large. Mm. It actually takes skill to not hit your A's on Capri. <laughs> <laughs> so big. <laughs> so... If a Capri ever dashes at you in a 5v5 fight, you just commit to him and you're going to win the fight. That's how you play against it. Alright, so final bit of thing off the patch shows. Do you feel like there should have been any other gods that should have received a nerf or a buff? Uh, I think Janus is really strong. Let me bring up the guard list real fast. Janus is still really strong. Hadn't really been touched. He's not... He He does a lot in terms of annoyance and he still does a lot of damage there are other mages that do a lot more damage than janice but they do it like in burst where janice is kind of wave wave mm. up, up like his 
um, damage comes in waves. He would portal into you, maybe all out. He would go in with his three, a lot of movement speed to you, go out, and he would just kill you over time, and you would never be able to kill him. And he has the global pressure that's like really insane. Mm -hmm. So I think Janice definitely needs an earth. I don't think it needs to be too damaged to his two, maybe buff the cooldown on his portal a bit. Or n nerf, sorry. <laughs> uh, they already did nerf him a bit with the slow immunity, but it still doesn't matter like too much. And as another guard, I think Circuit is still really good, especially in this meta right now where healers are like so highly valued. I would mm -hmm. like to see her get nerfed. Bellona got a slight nerf as well, which was nice, even though it doesn't really hurt her too much, because it's only early game, it's gonna hurt you having a big, big, bigger mana cost. And the only thing I would see this uh, mean is that Bellona really can't be played that much more in support as and jungle, which she could be flexed into before, but now she just, like, this really makes her the solo laner. You don't really want to play her in any other role now. <laughs> And it's I, time I, for me to main solo now because yeah. I love Lona. You were trying to change your your main yeah, position, main I role, am. weren't you? Man, I I support life, man. I'm support for life. I, I I have no idea what my role is at this point because <laughs> I I haven't I haven't played Conquest that much, and whenever I do, I'm playing it basically with a few friends, which is having a laugh, yeah. like and still winning. Yeah, we did um <laughs> we did Mercury uh, Aphrodite lane twice. We won it. Like they they were doing what was it Thor Chiron and we got first blooded and we still won. <laughs> also, one thing to add is I think Athena kind of needs a nerf as well because she's <gasps> been doing so strong performance. Not, not my not my favorite god. No. no, she's like one of no. my favorite gods as well. No. But she got nerfed with her old, but that wasn't the right way to nerf her because a twenty percent more or like twenty second more cooldown. On your ult, that's not gonna matter, because then your team is just gonna wait 20 seconds with making the plays, and it it scales down the ult now. So you're gonna have the initial cooldown anyway, so it really doesn't matter. The thing about her is she can dash in and taunt, she can blink in and taunt, and she can get out. I think they need to nerf the cooldown on her one, so that it gets like a bit higher, because right now the know. dash is like 8.9 seconds with full cooldown reduction mm. which is just crazy for a support dash and maybe i would say not it really increase the time on the taunt but maybe like make the corner a bit lesser wide i guess or just do some kind of um mana like buff on it because it's actually still really cheap mana it's, I think a, it's really cheap it's 60 oh, at rank that's... 1 80 at rank 5 that's pretty cheap for a to for a, a taunt that bit yeah that's that's what all the Phoenix abilities early on you have like 60 65 70 75 80 that's shield wall confound which is her taunt and then the dash is scales with 10 which is all right mm. but <laughs> also a passive, it's just crazy, right? If maybe if you want to hit her really hard, you could also make it so that you can stack your passive. Um, what is it called? The reach? Not not the reach. Oh, you mean the, the, uh, the shield wall passive yeah. block? The block. Yeah. yeah. I think it's called block. It's crazy because Athena even has two passives, right? Yeah. Oh wait, no, it's um Maybe her dash. <laughs> it's an FPM yeah. to strike. Um, if you hit an enemy god, um, you get a stack of block which stacks up to three. Yeah. And that's yeah. that's kind of a passive as well, I would say. Mm. And it's actually says, uh, Fina gets absorbing if she hits an enemy. That should be if she hits a guard, not if she hits an enemy. Because right now, what I do when I play Fina, I just dash the creeps. Wait, does, and that, does that work? Yeah. Yeah, it does. Oh, holy <laughs> crap! I have been playing her wrong for so long. You just dash all the waves, <laughs> and then you go in and you taunt someone, and you're not gonna take any damage. Because what you want to do with a Fina is. If a support goes so ham, she just dashes in and taunts you, you should just be able to burn beats and then kill her. But you really can't, because ADC is not going to do anything for the three first shots, and she's mm. going to be so tanky because she's in support. Okay. You know those moments when you find out something about a god, and your plays go up with them? Like, mm. I found out with Isis a while back that her three gives her protections. And well, I did, it does, I did it not, steals protection. Yeah, yeah I, I did I not know that. that. And then I started playing her again, and I started using that ability in so many different <laughs> ways. And now I know that Ophina Stash uh, gives her block stacks on minions. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. It does. Wow. Uh, Isis's silence doesn't just give her protections. It shreds it gives, them as well. It, 
it gives people in a small AOE around her protections as well. <laughs> oh my God. It's pretty crazy. Like, when you find that, these things it, out. Does that work on minions as well? So you yeah. would like silence the enemy front minions and then the Ra would just beam the wave and he would do like no damage to the minions? Apparently if you um, use Isis's silence on a four minion wave, like all six minions, um, she can get as much protection as a full uh, full magic tank support. Yeah. So if you manage to, if you like, if, if Poseidon's trying to crack on you, you just use the, do it on the minion wave, get so many protections and live. Yeah. It's crazy. It doesn't even, oh, it's, it doesn't even say, like, in the description, enemy hit also lose a portion of the magical protections and a slowed for duration, allies affected by Isis funeral. It doesn't even say that much, it only says that allies, mm. allies affected by Isis um, gains magical protection. And what a lot of people usually forget is allies is also yourself. So that goes for like sovereignty passive as well, hard mm. was passive as well. If, you, if you're if you buying sovereignty, you're also going to get the magical protection. You're also going to get the HP 5 for yourself. So in a lot of the time, what Hyres described as allies, yourself, you go under that. A lot of people have been misunderstanding that. All right, uh, so, I believe that's yeah. going to do it for us for the patch notes. We're moving on to the esports oh, news. Uh, sushi, <laughs> there we go. Add to your podcast. <laughs> Just complete failure. Yeah, I failed again. Wait, it doesn't fly. What is she, she, paper. What's she doing? She's, I can't she's see trying. It she's trying to make. You know what? You know what Bart does in the middle of patch notes. Oh, the, the there cards. Go. They go throw okay. the cards. There you okay. go. Okay, esports news. We have <laughs> our. Cool, we have our weekly NA roster apocalypse updates. And yep. it, it's not that much of a roster apocalypse update this week, as it's just one team being affected. Elevate. The roster is let go. Is that a roster apocalypse or a roster nuke from orbit? I'm not too sure. <laughs> it it kind of was expected to happen, though. Yeah. Because you would see, I think, that EU played a lot stronger in regionals than NA. There was a lot more competition, even Dickness has almost been able to beat the first seed in the EU paradigm. Which actually ended up beating the almost undefeated Epsilon, which was considered like widely the best team in the world after the LAN, or like during the LAN, I guess. Not really before, because a lot of NA people still thought that Ego would come out really strong, maybe TSM would do really good again, but they didn't really play that well, and enemy kind of flopped that LAN as well. I think I think what really highlighted the difference between NA and EU right now was the third place matchup between Fnatic and Ego. Yeah, that was just uh, that was a... St- I don't want to use the word stump, but that was a really hard beat up of Eager. Like, they really got showed that Fnatic comes here to win. And even that we managed to take a game of Fnatic, I think that kind of shows that EU is in a lot better shape right now than they were last year. It was incredibly clinical in the second game between Fnatic and Eager. The enemy team drafted Thanatos, which you, you play back, you wait until Thanatos drops off and then you go in. For the first 20 minutes, Eager only had 4 kills and yeah. then Fnatic started to come out and fight and they won the game off that pretty much. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, that's what you do and I was sitting in the studio and what you guys couldn't hear is whenever Omega would die, Mania would just scream Bye bye Omega! <laughs> so <it's something> like, <laughs> it was like where you know Omega? He would just scream at Omega every time he got killed. He was like, "Bye bye Omega, go home Omega." He just screamed <laughs> so loud, and that was just every time Fnatic got a kill. Wow! Yeah, yeah. like screaming. You, like you heard that over the comms as well, because they let us listen into the comms a couple times. Yeah, and he also heard, "You're gonna fucking die, Omega! You're gonna <laughs> die!" Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they really like... wanted to get rid of him, didn't they? Yeah. Jeez, that was fun. Uh, I mean, I, Omega kind of was the driving force of that team as well, mm-hmm. though. Yeah. He definitely was. It's kind of uh, kind of cool, like to go to a land and hear the comms, because you don't really hear it, it very often. Like, it m- me and AJ and a few uh, Oz and Toad were at um, the Xbox LAN over the weekend, and just listening to the comms, especially in, in the paradigm, in the first paradigm game. Who are they against again? Uh, uh, they were against Exertus, weren't that, they? Was, is there, no, it wasn't Exertus, but that was a Ware versus M- Exertus, wasn't it? Wasn't it Reason? Game that was it, reason. reason. It was Reason versus power, Paradigm. Yeah. 
yeah. and you just hear the, the, the shots from Rudolph like, kill them! Kill them all! <laughs> it's like, I want to breathe in their blood! And stuff like that. It's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> the things you just wouldn't expect to hear in like, a, a comments, but they're the things that you like, that actually just yell the entire time. It's great. It must be awkward for production if they if the cast to say let's go to comms and then just as that happens, they say oh. stuff like that. <laughs> Paradigm actually in the day uh, I was casting that game. We were like let's go to comms as they literally saying after we join in Celia says, "I want to make a racist joke right now." <laughs> <laughs> That's, he just says that, and we're like, "No, Celia, don't do this." And uh, that's so fun, because every time we do the rules, like before the actual games, it's like, we have listening, so please don't say anything rude, and there are, there's always argumentation, well, if you guys want to listen to our comps, you should be aware that we're going to use the language that we use, and we don't care what you guys think. And there's always a big discussion about this, so we always end up agreeing that, okay, let's just make sure no racial joke, jo <laughs> no racial jokes or homophobic comments or racism of any kind <laughs> and when he just said i really want to make a racist joke right now we're like don't do it please. <laughs> you will be fine just yeah he, he doesn't end up doing it but yeah. they still go kind of ham in paradigm comes yeah. there's uh, a few things like that as well if people heard uh the conversations we have between egl matches oh like <laughs> oh. when when we were doing it with matt on production uh matt doesn't do production anymore it's now us who do it uh, whenever he was on production, he couldn't hear what he was saying, but we were always worried he'd turn the mic on by accident. And, like, <laughs> you'd hear one of, uh, like, the Hitler jokes or something. It's great. But well, that's, what, that's what it is, isn't it? It's what happens when you've got a group of people who well, are just Well, we've chilling. lasted eight weeks without mentioning Hitler, and there we go. We've Yay! Done it. <laughs> Godwin's we can now law. officially have this as Congrats. our final show. Godwin's A. Hey, we didn't, we didn't do anything. You had to do it. You what? had to do it, didn't you? What? So if I didn't mention that, we could have gone for another, like, eight weeks. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I feel like we should kick him off the show instead of me. Actually, wait. wait she'll say something later in this in this show yeah. where we'll kick her off for the fifth time. It's okay. fine. Yeah. All right. okay. <laughs> fifth time. Fifth time. Fifth yeah, time. I get kicked every, off every week. She gets kicked off the show. It's fine. Oh. <laughs> What's the first time you were kicked off the show for? Bacon, wasn't it? Yeah, I'm, I'm a vegetarian. They were like, you don't nah, eat bacon. Nah, nah, bacon. Oh. Right, yeah, kick. you can get out now, actually. Yeah, oh, yeah there you go. Like... That's kicked off the show yeah. for the fifth time. <laughs> we had the best to tell. There was like bacon and eggs every morning, just yeah. piles of it. Mm. That's so good. Breakfast of champions. Yeah. All right. Um, but back to Elevate and their roster being let go. I'm not too sure what this means for them, whether they're going to stick together or whether they're going to go their separate ways. But one person who will definitely not be joining them is Vesalius, who is going to be retiring from Smite professionally. Yeah. At least for the time being. For now. Um, that's to be expected, right? You get, I'm gonna use the word now, stomped for the through the whole season, and you can just see level wise they don't really fit in to the league. And then the question is, is there another NA team that can take that spot without getting stomped? And I don't know, cause I don't follow the NA scene too much. But seeing from NA, they always have this five, six really good teams, and then the rest is kind of like just way more down compared to the top teams because NA has like the best top teams historical but they didn't have a really wide scene they only had two or three good teams and I think that's kind of the same story right now where if you would look at EU there's so many good upcoming teams just always looking to go in and take all the spots so I understand it because I don't think Elevate had a lot of um, they didn't really have the um, confidence to beat someone if you play SPL yes it's still a lot of money but at least I wouldn't want to lose every week playing for a whole season then I would way rather just get a new team if you want to get a new team right now it should be done before Worlds you have a lot of time to prepare so I think it's a good decision It is. All right. It is. Sorry, AJ sending me a message here and uh, BMing me at the same time. So yes, I, I, <laughs> nice. I managed, to, managed to send him a message and BM him in just one word. <laughs> oh yeah, it was great. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, um, uh, but yeah, that's the NA Rust Apocalypse update for this week. Uh, I'm sure over the next few weeks we'll have stuff about Envy, Solo Mid, Denial, maybe even Cognitive and Ego are going to go through a few more changes. Who knows? 
people are going to join on eventually, I imagine. I, ca I can't imagine that Enemy and Clown are going to be like the only two people competing after this season. I think Enemy might get some roster changes as well. I you, you can't I'm... know. Like, you can never know. You can, but I'm in not... the other hand, why would Enemy get roster changes? Like, they have a lot of talent in their team, and then they have Pain. And Pain is so experienced, and he's so cool in what he does. And they know if they don't play up to the level, they're gonna get replaced. So they're always gonna play on, t like, they're always gonna play up to the best. They can't really slack in that team because Pain has shown before he's just gonna replace everyone <laughs> if it starts going bad. So they're gonna play up to the best, and they have Vitum Salt Machine, which are like the two outstanding players, I would say, like looking um, apart from Pain. And if they can just improve, keep on playing, they're also really young, the two of them. Mm -hmm. They're gonna be such a strong team. I think the mm -hmm. only change we would see is maybe adjust the chaos, getting replaced by a better player. Maybe they would pick someone up for Cog or Solo Mid. Maybe they'll pick up, I don't know, Gas, Snoopy, something like that. Not even Snoopy, because that's ADC. They wouldn't replace Reachum. But that's the only reason I could see why someone would get replaced if there's someone better looking mm -hmm. to take in the spot. And it doesn't have to be someone, it has to be someone that's like way better in that role. Mm -hmm. I think Enemy did really well at the the yeah, super they regionals did. I didn't know. They showed that they were a good team, so... Yeah, and it'd, they be, showed... it'd be interesting to see if they do change them, but... Yeah, they showed they understood the meta, mm. most importantly as well, definitely. Mm. Okay. Raise your pens. Raise your pens in chat, yes. Um, but a couple of other esports news, this time relating to Xbox. Um, this NA coming in very, very recently. The Juiced roster will not be attending the uh, MLG Finals. Uh, this weekend, they were saying that they had to dig into their pockets of quite a lot uh, to pay for the flights, um, and pricing not coming through in time. And they said they just felt like it wasn't worth going to this LAN. Uh, so hmm. they're not going to be uh, competitively playing. Uh, they're going to disband and probably even form a new team in the next season for Xbox. So that's one less team going to this LAN, and one less potential person going to the Spike World Championship. Hmm. That's uh, that's that's a bit of a shame though, isn't it? If they're, if they're not going because they couldn't, um, they didn't get their prize money or whatever on time, that's that's, that's a shame. My question is like, I don't think they clearly doesn't play the money for the travel for Xbox players, because we got paid our flights and we got paid our hotels and we got like um, food and everything and we even got. Like vans, limousine picked us up at the airport and Ooh. brought us to a hotel, and the Ooh. other way back, that was actually an actual limousine with like this black <laughs> guy just getting my uh, suitcase. That was really cool. But anyway, the point is that I think maybe high risk if they want to go so big on the Xbox scene, which it kind of feels like they do, also with the pricing, they should probably help one of the best teams to like make it uh, making them able to participate in the land and especially because it's in land it it doesn't cost so much as if you would like fly a lot of eu guys over that's actually that's actually a fair point like, getting mm -hmm. the eu guys over is like it's have you it's seen really much, expensive have you seen how much american flights are it's ridiculous yeah we've we tried to calculate like the price we thought that the price for like the price pool for the actual tournament was like half a million dollars and we kind of calculated that maybe they used like three million on the tournament itself just for the hotels and the flights and everything like the food and for like the people working there it was crazy i think they used quite a bit of money that week quite a bit quite a bit maybe one day they'll fly us out as well <laughs> maybe one day I maybe no do so. a Pantheon podcast live from the high res offices <laughs> <laughs> it's actually really cool right because the esports studio isn't in the actual office it's like a separate building where oh, they okay. just have esports are like they, everyone are there, or? yeah yeah it's really close like 500 meters or something oh okay so it's like and the funny thing is that's like everyone you know works in that studio and then everyone you don't know oh. who are like actually creating the game works in the other <laughs> studio and then there's Dry Bear, like, <laughs> working on Paladins. And then it's just Bart, Carla, everyone, like, Ugly Cat Lady, Kelly, F-Dot, Hidden Man, 
like everyone you know from Hyrus works in the esports studio because that's kind of like the contact, uh, also all the production, and then you have the people that actually creates the game that work in like the real studios or whatever you could say. Actually, here's a question: Did you meet Zayden? Zayden? Yeah. Did you meet him? I think so. I'm not sure because <laughs> SNK did the. Production was, that week. He did, yeah, he did the minimap, or like, no, the camera work. work. Yeah, yeah camera go. work. <clears throat> I think I met Zidon. I, I definitely, yeah, yeah, I did. I I'm, did. I'm curious what Zidon looks like. He's, but... he's a bit big, he's tall, and he's like, like, I can't remember too much. There's so many guys <laughs> in production. They were like, literally just like 10 square meters, and there were just 15 guys doing production. <laughs> it was okay. crazy. They, they had That's like, crazy. Five or six PCs spectating the same game, so they could do the split push cam, the mm-hmm. overview, the graphs, and then they had all the guys like doing the graphs and doing the statistics and the instant replays. And yeah, it, it was kind of crazy. Also, a really big experience actually mm-hmm. being able to cast the game, so you could hear production in your ears. They would just randomly speak over you, and they would even make jokes, and just you could hear them <laughs> laughing. And <laughs> we know what that's like now as well. Yeah. 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 We've uh, started doing that with the EGL stuff, haven't we? Like production <laughs> is now uh, he has the mic disabled so the viewers can't hear him, yeah. but but he's there talking to the to the casters and it, it caught me off a guard a couple of times yesterday where I was talking and I hear press L once and I stop talking. I'm like what 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 what? Oh okay, right okay. Now I can continue with what I'm saying. It does throw you off a little bit, though, doesn't it? Like, you gotta be, you gotta be concentrating incredibly hard. Like mm. a lot of people think you can just walk up and then just start talking about the game and casting. Like that's talking about the game. That's not casting. No. To be fair, and that, that's to be fair. That's an entirely different conversation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the real point is, I think it's sad that Juice can't go. Even I didn't actually know they placed fifth because I was just placing all my bets on uh, Juice and. Uh, the season ticket, <laughs> but anyway, I still think it's sad that a fifth place team can't attend LAN. And yeah. definitely when it's a name like Juice, not that it's a big organization, but Juice is really known in Smite mm. for DM Brandon and his whole community. DM Brandon is the most known streamer in Smite, so it's sad to see that his brand can't attend. Maybe a bit because of personal problems and of the money. I don't know if they just use the money as an is- like excuse because they really don't want to go. Because maybe they lost a lot of scrims, they don't think they're going to perform well. And then they'd rather not just waste the money because they know they're not going to qualify anyway. Mm. It's a shame yeah, they, that we uh... don't think that, that is that. Like, if, if they're a strong team, uh, it'd be nice to think that they could possibly do it, but if they're that sure. So I don't know. Up. It's going to get the uh, tournament details for the MLG Pro League Finals right now. Okay. Uh, so yeah, it is going to be a aware gaming. Uh, this is aware gaming and a. Uh, oh, just, just to confuse oh, like... matters. Yeah, oh. just confuse matters. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's aware gaming and a versus elevate, and eager versus epsilon for the quarterfinals. The winners of that will face release gaming and XGN respectively, and then the winners of those will face off the finals. If Team Eager win this tournament. Then whoever finishes second will go instead. Why? Because Team Eager have already qualified through the UMG Invitational. Oh. What is UMG? Uh, UMG was a Invitational tournament that they brought up. Bas- they said, right, who are the four best NA teams? Mm-hmm. Right, we're going to bring them here to a tournament just to like say, this is Xbox Esports for Spite. We are here. We are going to be making a stake for this. Mm-hmm. Uh, here, here's how competitive this is, and the winner will go to Worlds, essentially. If if they were really qualified, mm-hmm. are they allowed to attend that tournament? Yes, they are, because it was done through the MLG um, League, which they played in throughout all the weeks. They qualified, and this is for prize money as well. Oh, okay. okay. I was going to ask if there was prize money, but yeah, yeah it makes yeah. sense if there was prize money. Cause I, do remember, that... I do remember a thing a while back of them saying that if you've already qualified, you can't qualify again, which in my eyes would mean that you can't take part in the tournament, but if there's a prize on the line, it makes sense, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> uh, but just to confuse you guys even more, Aware Gaming NA will be attending that. Aware Gaming EU... 
Uh, this is a spoiler warning, by the way. They've already qualified for the Smite World Championship, being Yay. the second Xbox team to do so, beating Paradigm 3-1 in the UK ESL Finals. It was an absolute pleasure to be there live to watch it. I sadly couldn't make the Sunday. Yeah. Although you guys did get a, a I, good I couldn't make afterwards. the whole event, please. Yeah. Like, Dark Guy, please. Hey, what? I gave you a Skype call at the very least. I know, you did. That was, that was really <laughs> nice. That was really sweet. Oh, I was did like, you actually... Aww. Actually, I guess we guess we can say it now. How many of us, uh, how many people in our group anyway, AJ, weren't on the Wi-Fi? <laughs> I'm not too sure. Because someone passed a password around, nice. and I don't know who like passed it originally. It, it was great. It was Oz boss. No, Oz <laughs> gave it to me. He got it from someone else. Okay. Someone know. else in our group gave it to him. <laughs> So we had all of us, like, I was trying to use the, the 3G, and in that building you had, like, no signal, and then you suddenly got the Wi-Fi pass, and it's like, oh my god, this is great, I can actually tweet about the event now. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, oh. Aware Gaming won, uh, there was a bit of confusion uh, amongst the players, because uh, throughout the entire tournament, and whilst they were practicing outside of the event, um, they were playing on Xboxes uh, with 30 frames per second, mm. and all the controls and the refresh rates they were used to. Oh, if I remember, you also had Xing Tian. They also had Xing Tian, uh, who was for some reason not, available, not allowed to the tournament, but we'll skip yeah. over that. Then they actually get into the tournament playing on the game. And they're playing on... They're playing on PC, Smite, with um, Xbox controllers, essentially. Or at, least that's, at least that's what the players told us. Mm. So it's it was weird for them at first. I mean, rule, rule of felt at home. <laughs> a ruler. 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 What's You're not doing it right. I Go can't take... do it, it's too difficult. Well, hold on. AJ, do you want to do the ruler? Ruler! <laughs> or you also do ruler! Like, yeah. it's such a British chant. It is. <laughs> it really is. Like, it's like there's a reason we're known as like the yobbish. The yobbish country, really, isn't it? Yeah. Like, actually, speaking of that, blame Toad for that, who, I, and I, I don't get tired of saying this, who got, what was it, who got cut off at the bar at half past five? Yes, he got, him and, <laughs> him and Stactimus Prime got cut off at the venue bar at half past five. <laughs> <laughs> After the event started, two and a half hours late. No, it's three hours late. Oh, God. It started three hours late, and he was rat assed. Yeah. Like, yeah, that was ridiculous how drunk Toad was at that point. <laughs> oh my god. It was crazy. Well, there's nothing scarier than a drunk northerner who doesn't get access to drinks. Yeah, that, is, that was pretty scary. Like, I, I'm there taking the piss, and he's, uh, he's a, a drunk. He's uh, actually pissed. He's actually, he's actually pissed, pissed. Uh,. Drunk northerner, there angry about not being able to get booze. It's like, okay, yeah, let's let's just let's just let's get away from this situation. Yep. <laughs> don't don't deal with Todd when he's drunk. Just just, just don't do it with Toad. Yeah, don't deal with Todd. <laughs> don't let me cast with him ever again. If you it's go just... to uh, if you go to Twitter dot com slash King Toad One and block him, uh... <laughs> <laughs> we do this every show now. <laughs> yeah. King Todd One. Yeah. <laughs> block. And then block. Oh, he has the Mulan background. And the frog. Yeah, that's him. That's ah. Toad. And this is his last tweet. I'm pretty fucking sure I'm the best caster in the goddamn world right now. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> <laughs> oh, was that his tweet from yesterday? Yeah, that was his tweet from yesterday. <laughs> okay. <I think> this... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, yeah. in his defense, some of chat did love him. <laughs> some people in chat did. And some of he chat was... hated it. He is Marmite, the caster. Yeah. He's like the, the Marmite personified, isn't he? Yeah. And now I have a really scary picture of him covered in Marmite in my head. I want that out. Well, I'll get. I'll try and get that out of you with moving on to the Brazil regionals. <laughs> yeah, please. Uh, which, which were finished up on the 28th after a delay at the because of a fire at the venue. I believe it was day, delayed by a couple of weeks because of it. And yeah, it's been finished up. INTZ were the favourites going into this. But they lost because the favourites never win lands. Instead, we're going to see Pain Gaming 
securing that tenth and final spot for the PC Worlds. They yeah. won the final three one. That's these finals are always like three one in favor of someone, aren't they? No, there's some, there's Not three always. two paradigm <laughs> three nil. <laughs> stop! 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 Uh, stop. I, I, I've given you two examples already. Shut up. Okay, carry on. Oh, boy. Carry on. I'm just going to sit here in shame for a little bit. Well, there's nothing really more to carry on from, apart from, oh look, the favourite got upset again. Yeah. Surprise. It happened at, uh, with the EU matches, didn't it? With Epsilon. Uh, and Paradigm. Epsilon being uh, overturned by Paradigm. Mm. Uh, it happened in NA with Envy getting wrecked. Um, <laughs> like, yeah. I don't think there's any other term for that. Nope. That was unexpected at every turn. I mean, that's just the the number one seed curse. Like you always talk about it, Atlan. It. I don't think there's there's like almost never any land where the first first seed is gonna win. Also, Titan were first seed in the the summer split in EU. They end up losing the land like completely. They're sixth place. They're no one really talked about them. They lost the Dignity Tests, which were like really not. Um, people don't, didn't think they were going to do that well. And they just lost the Dignity Tests. They lost to us. And I don't know. It, it, it just shows how much effort you have to put into constantly being on top that the top teams in the world can really show up at LAN, I guess you can say. Hmm. I think I think there's a statistic out there is out of the sixteen or so tournaments held in NA and EU, only two teams who are first seed have actually won them. Yeah. Which ones were they? Um that was tier seven launch tournament and I believe also was it cognitive gaming in the NA regionals last season? Okay. Cognitive Prime or Red? One of them red. It's I Cog- think it was red. Was it Cogred? Yeah. Cogred. That was mm. Division. Was it? That was Division's team, right? Yeah. Like with Gars. And... Yeah, the Gars. Yeah, yeah. Boosh. Yeah, and Prime was C9 now. Yeah. Yeah. TSM, though, at that point was a dominating force, wasn't it? It was. At that point. That was, uh, well, oh, I have to say it. Young Bay was ADC. Yeah. It was Young, Young Bay. Bay, ADC, Trick Support. You had Lobster in mid. Yeah. Pure Fit Jungle. And Game Hunter. Hunter. Yeah. Game, Game Hunter, Hunter, they got the Penta kill against the fan favorite. The old Dignity test with Lasses, Sepman, Dadaka support. And that was an Atoli solo. I don't, think, I don't think it was Dirty Care support, it was Shadow Key support. Dirty Care was in, in COG. He was? Yeah. It was actually, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're right. I wasn't even around at the time, dude. <laughs> I know the. Sh- oh, I know the sh- oh, wait, whoa. Sh- oh yeah, yeah, shit. Oh yeah, that, that was the sick Aphrodite Dukes where you're like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Yeah, Dark was the. He was a so- support oh, yeah, he, for he was C9. Cognitive. Yeah, that's C9 now, right? Yeah, like, no. Back C9. in the good old days of Freya Jungle and Aphrodite oh. support. Uh. <laughs> wow. And I- warriors, uh, warriors everywhere. Before yeah. warriors got completely nerfed. And now look where we're at. Guardians. Guardians, <laughs> Guardians everywhere. Guardians everywhere. It's just because Guardians are such high scaling, isn't it? Yeah. And that's the only reason. They have a new warrior. Kind of, um, basically, the problem that Warriors had was they could build defensive and do a lot of damage with basic attacks and abilities. Which is a, which is the problem Guardians have right now. Indeed. Guardian so, nerf, please. Let's go. In, in before uh, blanket Guardian nerf. How yeah. many, if they did that, how many would become unplayable? That's a, Pikachu has a really good point in chat. Epsilon only lost the launch tournament, so they then got the first heat uh, curse going into Worlds. Ah. So they win Worlds. But then again, the only one of the only teams to beat the first heat curse is actually the two teams that's now in the first heat curse, right? <laughs> <laughs> the TSM from launch tournament, that's three of the same, and COG is also... Or was that the other? I, I don't know if that's the that other, was the other COG. Oh, okay, well, okay. close enough. Close enough. <laughs> it, it was under the same branding, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. We got this. There you go. Right, so that's pretty much... It's been a slow week for esports news, let's be honest. It has, yeah. it really has. Uh, so There's only next... so long you can pad esports conversation. Next yeah. week we'll be able to talk about the winner of that MLG Pro League Finals. 
and that will be the final spot to be qualified for Worlds before the World Championship. Because there's one more spot after that, and that is the Open Bracket Tournament, which the old NV roster is going to be attending. Yeah. Oh, okay. With Omega. Yeah. yeah, with Omega. No so Icon and Omega Red. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's the, that's the team. So if you guys don't know, if you do have an Xbox team and you want to have your shot at playing for one hundred and fifty thousand dollars at the Spike World Championships, all you have to do is get your team registered for the Open Bracket Tournament on the seventh and the eighth. I believe there's going to be a lot more information about that in the coming weeks. There you Yay. go. Good luck if you do decide to go on it. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. Best Looking of luck for to our Xbox there. team. Someone hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> have you got an Xbox? Paper fights. I, I don't even have an Xbox. Yeah, Someone I, buy an Xbox. That was the funniest thing. After enemy already qualified for Worlds and they lost the finals, we team just tweeted Xbox. <laughs> 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 like, I'm, I'm just going to tweet Xbox now, man. I didn't make first seat. I'm going to go on Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, on, on my Xbox note, um, like we've, I've asked this for a few people, but I mean, how do you feel about the PC players moving to Xbox? I mean, I don't see why not. Like right now, myself, I don't have a lot to do with just taking a break from scrims. There's no need to just go back after a big tournament and scrim. We're going to look, what do we want to do now? I think that's kind of the position all teams that are not in Worlds. At, what are we going to do now? Like... Are we going to make some changes to try and get better? Are we going to get a new coach? We aren't getting a new coach, that's just an example. And that's kind of it, right? You're just waiting right now. It's kind of that time. You don't really do a lot. There's not, there haven't even been a tournament yet for like the teams to just play, play for gems or play for like the smallest price money. So if a time to like do, try, do something else and try something else, it has to be now. So I, I, I would have done the same if I had an Xbox, I think, just try and play it. And it's just you you want to compete for something. Right now we don't have anything to compete for for like the next two months. So I'm just trying to get my stream going and that's, I guess, what other people are doing as well. Mm. And if you want to go for Xbox, I think it's all right. I can't see why you can argue that it's stupid, but if they're going to get worse on PC, that's their own mistake. Right, it's yes. gonna bite themselves in the ass. It, it's gonna look good for you. You're gonna come back when they all come back. He's just gonna crush him. Yeah. And then take the yeah. next world championship easy. Oh my god, how did these guys get so good? They kept playing. That's what they did. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I'm gonna apologize on behalf of Sushi for feeding her cat. <laughs> I'm I'm doing it for for the viewers. Okay. <laughs> they they all want to see a cat. Okay, come here. Come here. Hey. Come okay. On. Come okay. On. Damn it, sushi. Damn it, sushi. Damn it, sushi. Damn it, dairy. Technically, though, it's not sushi eating on the show. It's a cat. Yeah. All right, well, we're not talking about bass dads. We're going to be talking about a different bar. It's Bacchus. I've got a discussion for the week. The resident fat man. He's resident. The original fat man. Joust father. Joust father unleashed. Have you actually seen those Joust father videos? Yeah. um, Pennsylvania on YouTube has got three of them out now. Okay. It's the Joust Father, the, was it The Legend Returns, and something else I can't remember. Oh, wait, I think I have seen those. Is that where he's just doing all these MLG edits for Barkus in, in Joust? Yes. Yeah. Okay, I have Killer seen those. You yeah. or something like that? Uh, I need to find those again. Like, they're amazing. They are amazing. Sh- Shiller does a lot of, of those Barkus. Yeah. <laughs> like, he had like a Dunk Squad video with, with, with yeah. like, yeah. yeah. And her back is when he just all jumped the red buff and killed someone using <laughs> red buff. That was like the best invade I've ever seen. <laughs> oh That's my amazing. god. I, I've, I've been wanting to do something like that. Just yeah, with, me too. You know, me too. Just just go into like a random conquest 5v5 and just invade with 5 yes. map and jump. <laughs> that would, I, people actually die. Like they just die from the jumps. That was the funniest part. Like they didn't even have to AA. They just died from the jump. <laughs> Who would you have in that? You've got Anher, Bacchus. It's it, they. They did Anher, Bacchus, Odin, Odin Bacchusura, and uh who was the final one? Fenrir. Ah, uh, okay. Actually, doesn't Odin have like one of the highest damaging level yeah, he one is, jumps? It's like one twenty, I think. It's really crazy. Like his jump is just insane. Let me look real fast. It's one twenty. Yeah. 
120, wow. That's a lot of damage at level 1. That's, That's crazy. That's a lot of damage. Actually but, I mean, Chepri does the same damage at level 1 as well. 120 on his uh, 2. There's a lot of, like, guardians and support-oriented guards that have the highest damaging abilities early on in the game. Which is kind of crazy, right? Mm. Also, Definitely. Athena. I think that's actually the highest one. That's I've I've played against Solo Athena before. It it, it hurts. Yeah, yeah, it's 140 it base damage at level one from one ability. That's is that from <laughs> that's from Shield Wall, isn't it? Yeah, Shield Wall. That's crazy. It's 60 to 80. It's really crazy. Plus your magical power as well. Mhm. Mm that's that's ridiculous. About magical power, also one thing. That's really good about Pegasus, right? Is the stronger meter, the passive. You actually get a lot of magical power out of it. And also on the um, also on the trigger meter, you get fourteen percent damage mitigation when you're yeah. intoxicated. That's which that's means he's, he's like one of the tankiest supports out there because of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also when you chuck, you get like a self buff for six seconds where you get protections. I think it's like thirty. Uh, it's max rank. fifteen to thirty-five. Yeah. It's like, it's rank. quite a bit. So if you're just getting cranked, you can just quickly use your one if you're doing something else. Uh, so, well, as we're talking about his abilities and stuff, then shall we quickly go through what his passive and abilities actually are? Yes. For those okay. who don't know, for those who didn't play him. He's not, you don't see him very often, actually, nowadays, which is a shame, because he's, he's one of the cooler supports, but I just don't Definitely. I don't play him very often. He's like the only support I can actually play. So. He's really hard. Yeah. It's really hard, and you have to get the push with him. Yeah. Early on, otherwise you're just now. But that well, always ridiculous as well. Right? It's crazy. Yeah. All right, so okay, what do you take us through the abilities? Yep. So his passive is called Drunkometer. Um, so he, he is, of course, the god of wine and revelry. So he takes a drink from his jug. Uh, he slowly he gets a a couple different levels of that. If he's tipsy, uh, he will take seven percent less damage and gain ten magical power. And if he is smashed, that is for between the second and third level, he will take 14% less damage and actually gain 30 magical power. Um, so that's whenever he actually chugs or uses his ultimate, he gets some of that passive going up. Uh, his first ability is Chug. It's uh, He basically takes a drink from his jug, giving himself a buff. Um, if he kills an enemy god, he gets 10% on his passive Drunkometer as well. Uh, he will gain uh, 33 35, 37, 39, and 41% to his Drunkometer, 15 to 35 protections in the last 6 seconds. Um, the downside about this is early game, that's a really mana intensive ability. His second ability is Belly Flop. Uh, he jumps on in, uh, slamming, people, slamming into the ground, knocking them up. Uh, he does between seven, uh, 90 to 250 damage with 70% magical power, slows for 20%, and the duration of that is 2 seconds. Uh, his third ability is Belch of the Gods. He uh, belches on his opponents in a cone. Uh, he is knock-up immune, and he does that for two seconds. Uh, he does damage of 20 to 80 per tick, uh, stuns for one second, and does a healing debuff of 25% for three seconds. Yeah. And then his ultimate is Intoxicate. Uh, he smashes his jug of wine on the ground, losing all of his booze. Uh, gives himself smash... Uh, sorry, is it no, he doesn't give himself smash, does he? Uh, no, he doesn't. If he is smashed, he gains an uh, he gains magical power buff over the anger of his lost wine. Does 250 to 550 damage plus 70 percent magical power. Has a uh, he does he what's he do to them? He what's it called? Intoxicate them. Yeah. yeah. So they're disoriented, don't they? For eight seconds. Yeah. Um, they're just he, running around. Yeah. He gains a magical power buff of 20 to 60, and uh, his buff duration is five seconds. So. That ultimate is so strong. Yeah. That's what one thing you said that the chuck is really mana mana intensive. They buffed that recently. It still costs a hundred forty mana at the um, what's it called? Level five, but yeah. now it costs forty mana at level one. So I think if I have myself I wouldn't even like if I could I would just not level back as one. Like, you get some more protections, but the mana cost is 25 more. And level, yeah. I would level it, but like I, you could see arguments that why you wouldn't even level your 1. Because it goes from, like, it costs 100 more mana at level 5 than actual level 1. So that's, like, really big. And also, he has one of the most, how do you say that, the, 
the best CC in the game, which is the Nogob, because you can't beat the Nogob unless mm. you do it preemptively, where if you get Emir frozen or Fina taunted, you can do that, like, just point second after. If you do the point second after getting knocked up, your beat just go off and they do nothing. And I actually, I didn't even knew he had a slow. Apparently he has a 20% slow. Mm. That's really strong as well. And one thing that a lot of people don't get is, like, Nogob immunity is really strong, especially for supports. Now that Ching Chang is also so much in the meta and the support role, Jeb as well. You would see a guard like Ares also does really well against Nogob guards because his free is also Nogob immunity. And with the fact that Nogobs are so strong in Smite, being able to immune Nogobs is really, really, really strong. It used to be an issue with Barkus, isn't it? Where he, when he was using his Belcher for Gods, he, he would get no- always get interrupted. He would oh. never get his never ever get his CC off. Vegas has actually been buffed quite a bit. Like mm. the mana buff and the dog up buff. <laughs> and he's really strong right now. He just doesn't fit the meta that well. Yeah, that's unfortunate. I mean, you, you saw Paradigm try to fit him into the solo lane in one of their crazy comps <laughs> against Epsilon. <laughs> it yeah. didn't quite work out. Um, but there was you could see what the plan was and you could see that. Yeah, he actually under- picked someone up, like one shot them. Under under different circumstances, it would have paid off. Yeah. He's he's incredibly fun to play. But what sort of what sort of hunters do you like? We're gonna say that he's a support. We're playing him a support role. What sort of gods do you want to pair him up with? His best fit is uh, definitely Enher. You jump someone, and Enher's gonna pill a stun. You use your ult, Enher ults, and with the recent buff to Enher as well, you're just gonna one shot someone. That's like. Most one of the most intense kill lanes you can get in terms of terms of bro- <laughs> burst. Sorry, I can't speak right now. <laughs> it does so much damage compared to like another kill lane. Maybe you could argue that the uh, Artemis uh, Ymir is a kill lane, Sylvanas Uller is a kill lane, Sober Cubit is a kill lane. But in terms of just flat out damage, Bagus and her is like the lane that does the most damage. Just from their abilities, they do have so much ability damage, and they can pretty much beat anyone at a level five fight, and that's like the most important thing. If you hit level five as back as center, you don't need to be scared, and that's his best fit. Like Cupid fits best with Sobek, and Medusa fits the best with Athena, and you say Uller fits the best with Savannah, and so on. It's it's kind of fun how like almost every ADC has this one support they fit the best with, and Compared to like support souls, I've the one that you see they fit best with. It's not like Bacchus goes really well with other guards. He goes good with other guards, but Enher is definitely the best. Mm-hmm. Uller works as well. Neef is really nice as well for the, the um, what's it called? The spirit Wait. arrow. Mm. And one <clears> thing <throat> we also learned at the LAN is we played the Sil and Nasha combo. I don't know if you guys remember. I remember that. <laughs> we were playing Nasha, Nasha ult someone, and just still a ult. The thing is, you can get hit by damage, abilities, basic attacks, 10 feet above the ground, right? So that's like a so big knock up, like a baggage jump. When uh, Nasha goes down as well, they get knocked up slightly. You can't do anything about the knock up. As I said, you can't. You can only beats, but the beats won't allow you to do anything. Like you can't even. If you have beats Aegis, you can't even beats an Aegis. You won't have time to do that. So if you hit that timing, when you're like knocked up, it's just crazy because you can't really react to it. And that's the same with backers. You just knock someone up. They can't react, and you can get CC on the target, and you can do damage while they can't like possibly and physically react in smite and that's why Nogops is so strong and that's really what makes Vegas so strong. This is belly flop. I mean the Barkas and her lane as well, you've got two knockups, haven't you as well? Yeah. yeah. So if like, you want to be extra BM, knock them up, knock them up again. Well, <laughs> I, 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 I sort of count on her as a knock back because you're knocking them away from where you land. True, that's yeah. True. yeah. That's true. So, but yeah, it's it's still just ridiculously strong. The second you get hit by that belly flop, you better be hoping that it's you actually, live. Yeah, it's classed as a knockback as well, and her, not a knockup. So I'm correct. Woohoo. Yeah. 
Oh. One thing we had was Shaggy Shank played and her doing a scrim, and we had an Avelix. <laughs> and with 100 health, he could have gotten out, he just jumped into the enemy tower. And we actually managed to get the Avelix all off and kill someone. <laughs> but Shaggy died, because he just got hit by tower once. But he just jumped in and used the and her Avelix combo, which is also something you can do with Vegas. Vegas goes really well with these CC Harry junglers, like Avelix for. And he goes less well with like more the assassin style, where you would say Kali, maybe Fenrir, Hunbats. Hunbats is alright. And also one thing we forgot is that Bagus goes really well with Shibalonki. Mm -hmm. I was later. just thinking that one. Later, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Because with Intoxicate, you can't, you can't stop moving, can you? Nope. So you're always no, you... moving even when you stop. Yeah. Let go of the keyboard. So Intoxicate with that. That's actually a really good combo. I'd have to test if she can actually start banging. Because I think that might be a possibility. Because sometimes you can actually start banging when you're intoxicated. It mm. just cancels after like 0.2 seconds and you just have to time it really well. Because what you do now if it's Shibalongi ult you, you just press B like right before the second <laughs> one slams in. And it's going to stutter step you for a second and it's going to count as you standing still. I haven't tested that, but I don't think you can do it actually. So it's a really strong combo. Like mm. You have to burn beats because... It sets up quite a bit. Shibalongi stun is like 1.6 seconds, I think. Yeah. Let me look real fast. It's 1.5 seconds. That's actually quite a bit of a stun. That is. <clears throat> for the entire map as well. So. Yeah. 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 That's, that's, it's... that's a pretty good one. Yeah. <laughs> actually, there's a little trick for people who don't actually know this yet with um, a Barkas ult. If Barkas ults you, and you know when you're wobbling about all over the place, you're doing stuff. Um, I found that the greatest way of dealing with that to try and keep your aim as straight as you can is hammer A and D. Because you're then sidestepping, and it's um, not quite as big of an issue. Apparently, if Kabrakan is using tremors and you're intoxicated, yeah. all you have to do is press, to move straight forward, all you have to do is press press W and alternate A and D every, what was it, 0.5 seconds, I think it was? Mm. That I, that, I saw that in a Reddit post, just like, is is that true? I haven't managed to test it out yet, but if that actually works, there's, you can't, you can't pair Kabrakin and Bacchus together. Just, you can't yeah. each other. <laughs> uh, I've seen those, like, Bacchus intoxicated and Kabrakin, and they just stand still, and you just, like, fly around with insane movement speed. <laughs> oh, that's that so fun. And then you have a Honbats or something on top of that. They're going to be so, the movement is just going to be crazy. Actually, as, a, as a thought, does Barkus get much play on Xbox? Because he's all Actually, cones and circles. He doesn't, actually. We saw that line he didn't get picked up once. Because hmm. that was one of the Xbox things, wasn't it? They're, like, they more favour the cones thing is though, and circles. The thing is, though, they, they do like their AoEs, but they don't like AoEs which you have to... which are small AoE aim like down the line, hmm. which is why you don't see Rami, you don't see Thor that much on Xbox. Because of the way their targeting works and the sensitivity of their sticks... It's very difficult to confirm those abilities. We saw how difficult it was playing for Ram. I can't imagine how difficult that would actually be. Yeah. <laughs> that, like, yeah. I wouldn't want to play that. No, I couldn't imagine playing that of a controller. The Twitch is shots are so much easier. Sorry. Who is it that's so much like better on the Xbox? I can't remember right now. Um, <laughs> Medusa, I... isn't it? Medis is ridiculous on Xbox. Yeah, yeah, Because no one can turn quick yeah. enough. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no one can turn. That's true. Like, a Fina Medusa is just broken in Xbox. <laughs> you just have to, like, have a hot key for sensitivity, and you just have to smash it and just, like, <laughs> turn your controller. Yeah. yeah I, was, I was talking to one of the players after they faced Medusa, and they were using the Idusa skin, and apparently it bugged out, so you didn't see the start of, of the ult, so it just got stunned randomly for it. Oh, okay. Uh. Yeah. Like it was, it was a glitch. There was a glitch with Ra for the longest time, and it may still be there. Where if he's in the jungle and you don't see him, you can't hear him start up the ult. You don't hear this. You don't even see the sound effect or the the effects for it. Oh really? Like it just kills you, and you just are like going, "What killed me? I've died randomly." But you press Y, and you're like, "What?" Yeah. Okay. I have to test that. Mm. That's a strange one. I've I've not seen that one before actually. Mind you, there's I've, a lot of bugs. I've in had it happen to me before, and I've been like. The okay. fuck is this? Have you ever had an invisible Artemis? I've had a visible Chunga in my game. Yeah, but they both gets to deal with. Invisible Athena. <laughs> oh god! <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I had that so many times. It's like I'm, I'm, I'm randomly looking in this direction. What? <laughs> what is going on? Oh, that's ridiculous. That's actually ridiculous. 
Okay, so with Barkus, we know what he's uh, he's good with. Um, what do you reckon he's go- uh, bad against? Um, Ares is the hard counter to Bacchus because you don't get knocked up. You just press 3 when he jumps at you. Mm. And he can't really do anything if he gets chained other than turn around and belch. But it's not really going to work. And Ares has CC immunity in form if you get older, you can just ult, which might not be the best idea. But a really big point is that he forces Bacchus to get to get speeds, which beats is really good in this meta right now on supports. But if you still force the enemy support to get beats, it's kind of a loss or lose, mm-hmm. or you say that for the enemy team, right? Because then it's like, ah, oh, it's an Ares, I have to get beats. And you can't win the lane as well against the Ares because you're just going to get chained and um, freed when you get when you try and jump at the Ares. So that's like a big uh, counter. And I think Athena does really well against Bagus as well because you can interrupt. Bagus, yeah. Emir, you would think like a god like Emir would do really well against uh, Bagus, but it actually doesn't do too well because Emir is just gonna like go on you. When your jump is down, he can just kill you. Like that's how it works. He works really when, well against gods like Sylvanas and Sobek though. Like that's some natural counters, yes. And I also believe Jep. He's like decent against Jep because of the no up immunity. Yeah, that makes sense. Actually, I've seen a few times a Bagus uh, and a Sobek going for each other. The Sobek dashes just as the Barkus jumps, and they they look at each other slightly awkwardly, like, "Well, that happened." Yeah. <laughs> uh, when Barkus was first released, apparently his jump was near enough instant, and you couldn't dodge it. Yeah, you couldn't. It was like, "Doop." He was, was like, so quick Whoa. for a fat man. He was so quick. Yeah. <laughs> wow. He also, um, if I remember correctly, it was either his gold skin or his uh, father Krishmash skin. Where the soles of his shoes didn't have uh, a skin, so like when he sat down, you could actually see the inside of the skin. <laughs> <laughs> it oh was God. so weird. Nice. It was so weird nice. seeing that. It was ridiculous. Well, I haven't tried that. Talking about Bagus skins, though, Bagus is the god that's got me the most fines in his peel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which skin? I like the legendary skin quite a bit. So I've got fine seventy five dollars using that skin. I used it twice doing SPL. Wasn't too smart. <laughs> so what happened, right, was that we go in and it's like, all right, boys, here we go again. No skins, no gold. Uh, you could play with skins, but you just could play with like, no uh, golden or diamond skins, <coughs> and that's what he's told me, right? Yeah. And I'm like, oh well, they didn't mention legendary skins. I'm just gonna play with a legendary skin. I play with a legendary skin. And it's like. Emil, you play with a legendary skin, you're getting fined. You never said so. Ah. <laughs> and then it's like, nice. what color is the legendary skin? It's golden. We said golden skins. No! I just misunderstood <laughs> that. And then, then I got fined. Then we won a game and I was so hyped that I just forgot and I just put it on again. <laughs> 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 so I actually have quite a fun history with Baggies. Like, whenever with, I'm playing Baggies, we always make the joke that I should just YOLO it and put it on. Like, we... I was so close to putting it on at the Super Regionals because I played Bagus and I was like, fuck it, man. I'm going to win so much money money anyway. Hey, but I actually fair, didn't go for it. To be fair, it's a good thing you did it before the rules changed when it's now a $500 fine. Yeah, I think what people are really scared of is it's like 500 What it means is that it goes up to 500 Like, you wouldn't get fined $500 for like using a global emote like the Lantern or something, right? Then you maybe get fined $50. It's not that it's you have to do something like really bad or like repeatedly to get fined five hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. At least how it was for me with the golden skin, even that that the rules weren't out that time, but they doubled up, right? So it was twenty five. Then I got fifty. Next time I would have gotten a hundred. Would have been two hundred, four hundred, and so on. Mm-hmm. Now I think it kind of caps out. They cap it at five hundred, and then they maybe even start like um, suspending players from like games if they keep breaking the rules and we we talked to the admins as well in the uh, high res and they're like yeah well fines have actually been way worse in na because apparently they taunt a lot in na and they mm. don't really care so they've gotten fined quite a bit but i haven't heard about someone that just got flat out um fined for 500 like you'd have to go into to twitter or something and write slot to someone or maybe <laughs> Yeah. PM someone doing an SPL game, you suck. Like the F word, you suck. You know, 
It's mm. not, it has to be pretty brutal before you actually get fined five hundred dollars. Fair enough. It's good we know that actually. Yeah. yeah. I think like, a lot of people you, thought it was five hundred. Oh, you I... could easily get fined at five hundred dollars in one game though. Just use a golden skin there, spam taunt and global emotes at the end <laughs> at the enemy town. Yeah, um, at the end just right you you suck this game. Sometimes. What is what's the reasoning behind the global emote ban then? It's actually game breaking in a point that it um at this lantern it kinda blocks your sight. Right, uh... if you're like running away from someone and you use your lantern, you can't actually see because it's so big, <laughs> and the fireworks is just disrupting. And I guess it actually causes FPS lag as well. I think we had a really big discussion about if you could like wave and clap and okay. dance and all these emotes. Can you use? Here's the most important question: Can you use Geb Save the World emote? Nope, we had that. Don't like. <sighs> can't use that emote. I, I personally asked if I could use the emote because uh, I love using that. That's a good one. Just whenever like someone makes hey. a bad play, you just go into VXG and you just stand there. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I can't even use that skin mode. That's like my favorite skin. Uh, What's it called? Like the... That's GEB1. Yeah, GEB. Get one, one is such a good yeah. skin. That's like the best skin ever. Now I just can't use it. Makes me sad. It's a shame. Actually, the, the thing I the thing that saddens me the most about the Geb uh, Save the World emote is uh, like it'd be so cool if they made it so that his Geb one skin had a slightly different one. Yeah, but <laughs> it's like uh, like uh, not a planet or something. Yeah, have like Jupiter or something. So, yeah, like... yeah, that'd be so cool. <laughs> Turn him into a Death Star. There. Oh, yes. Hi, Rez. There's an idea for you. Whoa. Geb saved the world. Save the world emote. Make it a Death Star, but not quite a Death Star. We don't want you being sued again. Let's see what you, what you do is you have <laughs> is you have Geb turning into a Death Star, and then you have Radzaska holding up a mini Alderon, which just have it destroyed. Oh, <laughs> oh that'd be so cool. Too yeah. soon. Too soon. <laughs> Alderon. Too soon. <laughs> yeah. like, how long ago was that? I'm, I'm not too sure. That was. See, the first set of Star Wars movies were like the 1980s. But don't forget, it was a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Remember that. <laughs> I like to think of Star Wars as a documentary. Yeah? Yeah. I think so. If it was a long time ago nice. in a galaxy far, far away, and they have the technology to travel between galaxies <clears throat> at light speed, and we're still here using computers, which some of which can't even handle Are they the going stream. different galaxies, or are they the same galaxy? I believe they're... Uh, I believe they're... Well, it's an intergalactic destroyer that they are piloting in, I think it's the fifth episode? Episode five, on Hoth. Yeah. Oh, uh, Empire Strikes Back. I think uh, they use the Imperial, like, the Imperial Destroyer as an intergalactic spaceship. Is it? I believe so, yeah. Okay. I'll take your word for it. I'll have to Google this after the show. Damn, we're talking about Star Wars on a Smite show. <laughs> it, it's fine, because the, it's fine, because it's going into the film coming out next month. Well, this month actually. Uh, yeah. Oh, it's yeah. this month. It's like fourteen days until it comes out. Yeah. yeah. I'm not booked on. I'm not booked for a show. I am going to watch it on the twenty fourth, I believe. On Christmas Eve. Really? Sister's you you sad act. Oh, okay, fine. Yeah. Okay, I take yeah. that back. I take it back. <laughs> you better take it. Back. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm so sorry. I mean, you have nothing at least in Denmark. Like, we don't have Christmas Day. We just have Christmas Eve. So you don't really do anything. Like you just sit there and wait, and we like, we actually, in Denmark you actually dance around the Christmas tree, like okay. and you sing songs. And then when you're done with that, you open the gifts, right? And that's okay. kind of the highlight. You just open gifts for like two hours, and then goodbye. I got my gifts. Okay. <laughs> in the UK, it's like Christmas morning, you open your presents, and yeah. then for Christmas dinner, you have Christmas lunch or Christmas dinner. And then you watch, uh, then you watch the TV, like a film. Then you watch the Queen's Speech. Then you watch Doctor Who. Then you have dinner, and then you get drunk. Nice. Uh, That's Britain in a nutshell. Get drunk. Sounds solid. So you're like yeah. completely hungover, and you have to open your gifts. What the fuck is this? Yeah, you open your gifts before you get drunk. That's, oh. the, that's what you do. Oh. Yeah. You open the gifts in the very morning. Yeah. Oh. And then whilst you're getting drunk, the if you have kids, they break the gifts there and then. <laughs> yeah, pretty like they, much. they get them at the beginning of the day. They're broken at the end. Hallelujah! Yes. It's Christmas. Merry Christmas! I spent two hundred quid on that. <laughs> so, but just before we get into the Q and A's, I've got one for Dark Eye. Yes. What is that mess on your bed? What mess on my bed? 
Oh, you mean, hold on. That's a box I opened before we went live. Uh, it is a bottle of, where's my screen camera, hold on. It is a bottle of dark matter rum. Mm-hmm. What? There. there you go. Okay. You asked a question, AJ, so... Yeah, I, I did. To... And you were you expecting it to be rum? Were ya? No. Boy? What else, like, a uh, new keyboard or something? New key, I wish. I can't I, afford I would go somewhere else with that, but whatever. That was, what like, you... so cool. When we went to Hi-Res, in the playtest room, they had this headset, like the G35. They had the Logitech um, uh, G710 Plus, which is also my keyboard. They had the same mice as I have. And they had the same mouse pad as I have. So they nice. had really everything I had. And I was just like... This well, is my I setup at home. You set yeah, up. You I guess I, I, I just brought everything there like to make sure. And then it's like, hmm. well, I'm just keeping up my hold. <laughs> like, it's, whatever. Be it's better to be safe than sorry, though, isn't it? Take yeah, your setup true. and then... Yeah, yeah. Always, always take your setup to lens. Yeah. I'd like a new keyboard. but I'm, I'm using a Razer Naga Hex mouse. It's great for MOBAs. But... Like, the keyboard is a crappy one, and I want to get a new one, but I can't afford it. I don't want to pay 140 quid on the keyboard. We had our Egyptian um, player, Chayo. He came in and he was like, you know, usually with the new newer keyboards, you have two USBs, right? Yeah. Apparently in Egypt, they're so far behind you, this, like, really shitty electric keyboard. It was, like, really small, looked really bad. Something that you would use in a school or something, like, even worse than that. <laughs> oh, no. And... It didn't even have USB. It has like the PS1. No. <laughs> They're still using like the PS2 sockets? Keyboard. Yeah. Wow. So he couldn't like actually get an adapter for his keyboard. Do so motherboards had... actually have that anymore? No, they don't. And that's wow. the problem. Like, he couldn't plug it. He was like, what the fuck? Why, why do you guys don't have this? We're like, wow. well, I don't know. Maybe we're like 10 years ahead of you guys. <laughs> I don't know. Wow, I didn't think Egypt was Why don't you have this? You're going, why the fuck do you have it? What <laughs> <laughs> Where do you have this? Where do you buy this now? Like what people, are those? people still make <laughs> these? <laughs> My god. My god. That's actually ridiculous. My question is like, what is the FPS he gets on his PC? Five. Like, that bad, actually. Like, he <laughs> managed to buy a new PC. So the, apparently, PCs are like up to date, but just the hardware just flat okay. out sucks. Like, he went to Best Buy and he bought like a new mice, new headset. I don't think he bought a webcam, but. And a new keyboard as well. Like, he bought everything. But the thing is, right now, that the only thing he kind of has is, like, the ping issue. He has 120 ping. And, like, the day when he got home and tried to play Smite again, because he just got used to zero ping, he was like, holy shit, my life sucks. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's basically EU life, isn't it, as well? Yeah. Is That's mostly why EU players seem to struggle at lands. Because yeah, they're so used to high ping. Mm, I had like I have around thirty eight mm. to thirty ping when I play, so it wasn't like too bad of a transition. It was really nice that you could just a instantly or b instantly, but besides that, it it wasn't too hard of a transition. All right, I believe it's time to move on to the Q and A that we've got lined up. Upcoming in the community. Yay. Well, I've been to we've already discussed that. It's the OMG. It's it's, oh, it's not the OMG. It's the MLG Xbox LAN on the fifth and sixth. And that's the final esports tournament before Worlds. We discussed that earlier in the show. There you go. That's the upcoming in the community. We do have an e e EGL tournament next Wednesday too. Yes, but that Every goes without saying. Absolutely. That goes without saying. Uh, hype. Hmm? EGL I don't, hype. I don't know if I can spoil this, but you guys be hyped for Sunday and Saturday. I don't know if it's this Sunday or Saturday, but like, just be hyped. Be ready. Be prepared. Be hyped. Is it going to be an announcement? Hyped. Yeah. It's going to be... A fun thing. I'm not going to say anything because I'm probably going to end up getting fined for even saying this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The, 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 right. This is just teasing the teaser. It's fine. The teasing yeah. of the teaser. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's like those those game companies who announce the announcement. Yeah. Like, we're yeah. going to be announcing our new game on this date. On this date. <laughs> You're like, okay, thanks. I'll, I'll just remember to check the internet that day eventually. shall I? It's like, here it is. It's been three years in the making. No, it's not Half-Life 3. Yeah. It's, it's like when Deus Ex Mankind Divider was announced. We're like, hey guys, we're making an announcement on this day. And everyone's like, is it the new Deus Ex game? But like, we can't say anything. Then they release it. It's like the new Deus Ex game. I'm like, well, really? We had no idea that was coming. Jeez. Anyway, Q&A. All right, so Sushi, you get Yay. your question first. 
Alright, Milzy, what is your favorite pizza topping? Ah, uh, um, pepperoni, I guess it's called. Nice. That's a pretty standard right. one. Standard. standard one. Actually, it's, it's yeah. one of the more standard ones we've not actually heard much yeah. of. I like I margarita quite a bit as well. It's like really, really good. Margarita's pretty good. <laughs> Alright, that's something we could all agree on. It's about. like either margarita just with pepperoni. <laughs> the others are okay, but those two are like definitely the best. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, and we don't we don't have to kick him off the show this week. <laughs> Whenever people say pineapple or a sweet corn, uh, a nose. No. I, so, like no. I had once a pizza with potato on, potato why? on, and it just rejected to eat it. I was like, why would you put a potato on a pizza? Yeah, actually, come my, on. My um, my girlfriend has some weird pizzas because she's got so many dietary restraints. It's like what? So she has like butternut squash on pizza, what? A what? sweet potato on pizza, and I'm there like, what? what? Chips and sweet corn. No. Is what my brother sometimes has. No. Like, chips are side for pizza. You don't put them on pizza. Yeah. Like, meat, is, meat is for pizza. Meat, Maybe meat, goes pizza on, yeah. meat goes on the pizza with the yep. cheese, with some tomato sauce, and then you have whatever the hell you want on the side, like some chicken. You, you can yeah. also have barbecue sauce on pizza instead of tomato. You can. Actually, who was it who won last week? That was uh, Deku, wasn't it? Who said something yeah. about pesto, didn't he? Pesto? What? No, that was Dandy and D. Freddy. Oh, these yeah, two. I th- I think, yeah, I think I think I yeah, think Fred that's... said pesto. Yeah, that was, was a low week for us. No, but <laughs> blame sushi. Hashtag blame sushi. Yeah. It, oh. They were a great guest. They were they were, were good guests. They were very good. Guests. Very, they were very good. Yeah, yeah. But their pizza choices were weird. questionable. I, mean, yeah. Although, I agree with the pesto choice actually, because like, pesto with some chicken and some cheese, pretty good. Yeah. It's pretty good. All right, so there's a couple of questions. One actually coming out of chat. Do you still wear white socks and sandals daily? Um, I have white socks on, I guess, but I'd say more Those gray. Are white. They're gray. <laughs> They're white, man. <laughs> Those are white. I'm wearing white socks. <laughs> um, and my sandals broke, so it's really sad. So <laughs> that's what I wish for Christmas. New, new sandals. <laughs> new sandals. But no, I actually didn't have socks and sandals on. Like, I don't know. I just thought it was, it was really, like, cozy going around in socks and sandals at Cologne, where I actually just did that all the time. But I just went for shoe this time. Shoe this what time. about going around in socks and socky sandals? <laughs> <laughs> That's ask, like ask the his... most fun thing that my brand... Like in my early days, for like socks and sandals, and then that guy called Soggy Sandal joins my team. I'm like, what? What? <laughs> <laughs> but for, for socks and sandals, look, it's a very British holiday t- tourist look, isn't it? Mm. So, like, so long as you don't have the socks pulled all the way up, then yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, those like, <laughs> like socks, 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 socks that are pulled geez. all the way up with um sock suspenders and uh short shorts. Oh, short no, shorts. Please. Who likes short shorts, AJ? I do. Sushi. <laughs> sushi was that? Nope. <laughs> I'm nope. sure someone just said sushi. No one did, but nah. <laughs> I, I'm, right. I'm not that type of girl, you know. I always wear like long, long pants, mm. skinny and black in the summer, because I'm like, I don't care. I'm gonna say now in the UK that means something completely different to US English. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay. Long pants. Trousers. Yeah, I mean, I mean pants, like skinny Tra- jeans. Trousers, man, trousers. Skinny jeans. <laughs> I know what you mean. Alright, there I'm we go. I'm just going for it. Okay, so we've got a, a couple questions on the Reddit post. Uh, but let me just refresh it quickly, just in case. Smite Gold, tell me the stuff. No, it doesn't tell me much. Okay, we have a couple questions. Uh, the first one is from Azun. Uh, didn't we meet him at the LAN? We did. we did. Azun. Yeah, uh, from Az- it's a question from Azun. Uh, what are your opinion? What's your opinion on Nando's? Uh, let me Google Nando's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's basically the, that's a, that's a response from anyone who's not British. Okay, much. so that's his opinion on that's Nando's. His opinion on Nando's. To um, it. not I mean, one yet. it looks like uh, it looks okay. I guess it's a chicken. It's a <laughs> restaurant where you have chicken. And uh-huh. uh, you ask for a specific like a spiciness of a chicken oh. when you get sides of it. It's pretty good. I like. It's like a the, the saying over here in the UK is you have a cheeky Nando's. Yeah. Cheeky but Nando's. the descriptions of what a cheeky Nando's is are so British that mo- even most Brits don't understand what the term of a cheeky Nando's is. Yeah. 
That's pretty cool. In yeah. US, they had this uh, fast food thingy called uh, Five Guys. Five Guys Burgers. They've just come out in the UK. In the UK. Yeah. I don't know if they're breaking into Europe as well. Holy shit. I want that guy who's like pacing the whole team. I want that guy as my shot caller right now. We were there. They were like literally just eight people standing in no space making burgers. And then this guy is like all girls. And there's, then there's like this black guy. They're all black. And the black guy is like leading them. And he's like, yo, 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 what's up, man? Come in and join. He's just shouting like in the airport. He's just <laughs> shouting for everyone who passes by. And he's like... I need to uh, keep going, keep it going, keep it flowing, and just rapping all the time, like, <laughs> just non-stop for, like, two hours or something. I'm like, I want this guy as my shot caller. <laughs> Start playing smite, please. And it was just ridiculous. Like, me, Trix, and Kurofed, bad guy, and Saihos, we were, like, just eating, and he just, oh, he was just screaming, and it was just hilarious. Like, ah, oh, that was fun. You should ask him, just go, have you played smite? Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to join a pro team? <laughs> that was, no, he just paced his whole, like, the whole team. He just got them in such a good mood. He was just, like, screaming and shouting, keep it going, keep it flowing, and stuff like that. <laughs> keep it nice. fresh. Yeah. Oh, about Subway? Ignore me. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> and the other question we have on the Smite Reddit is uh, from Conwack. Uh, why does why does Amilsi keep dodging my games? Um, so I recently, on my stream, I discovered borderless window. So every time I alt tap, it doesn't like freeze. Okay. So I was doing the bands, and picks, and there's an election in Denmark right now. So I was like watching something, and suddenly I alt tap like, oh, I'm, did my queue pop yet? And it it just says the server for thirty minutes. Nice. And I'm like, oh, fuck, man. And I wanted to play Smite Ranked. And it was like my second game. <laughs> Guess I'll just play Paladins. <laughs> paladins. Some Paladins. So I saved it, but yeah, that's why. I don't dodge. That's like my first dodge in, I don't know, a year. Did you not have the um, obnoxious sound effects of uh, when a queue uh, pops? Yeah, I do. But I just totally forgot. Like, I accepted <laughs> the queue. And then I got into the picks and bands. And I just totally forgot. I was just looking you, at something else. And once you once you're in, it doesn't tell you anything else, is it? So it's a matter yeah. of keeping that. That's on like it. way nicer from Paladins. It's like when you're in Smite, it says your game has started. That's mm. when you load in, and that's in Smite. But then you have to wait for your whole team to like load in all the guys with the potato pieces and the, uh, like rosters and stuff like that. There's a couple of levels, isn't there? You've got you've got uh, normal PC. You've got well, we've got gaming rig. You've got normal PC, you've got toaster, and then you have potato. Yeah. And then, and then below all of that, you've got the people who want to accept at the very last second, so they've got the best chance of calling the role that they want, and then they still yeah. fuck up. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and like basically in Paladins, it gives you it gives you an alert if you're like in when you're in the actual game. I think one thing they could do, it, even though it's like really dumb and they shouldn't do it, just to make it like even more idiot. Like proof, you should just add like you ping in ten seconds. Just get a normal like big uh, thing if you're all tapped, and then have like a known voice like F dot screaming or something about the screaming at you. <laughs> you're pinging. What they, should, what they should do is they should do what Paladins did for the first couple of days and just have the noise oh, pinging up constantly. Oh, <laughs> oh. oh no! You're no, ready. Your match is ready. Your match is ready. Your match is ready. 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 Do you know what now? Do you know what I kind of want as my um. Text home now. Speaking of paladins, Fernando. Fernando. I just love that. I just love it. I just always hear flamenco guitars when I hear it. Yeah. Hey, uh, for those of you who are playing paladins, there was a patch today which introduced a new character. Oh, I need to play. It was Evie. Evie. E V I E. I think it's the uh, name. Oh, was she the blue check? Yes. Hey. So yeah. Go collect more cards. Go play the new <coughs> character if you so wish. Apparently, you're have... getting starter cards as well. Yeah, yeah you get um, a legendary. Every character now gets a legendary and set amounts of different cards. Uh, so they're not that doesn't affect the cards you've got already. I believe no resets. They said. No, you just get them, and then you get duplicates if mm. like you have it already. Yeah, which That's is cool. Awesome. Which That's is cool like... if you've already got a couple of legendaries. Yeah. Like, congratulations if you have a couple of legendaries that are the same yeah. but it just means you can get like a guaranteed new legendary then that's cool mm -hmm. that's cool yeah 
another question coming out from the chat is, well, I'm going to phrase it in a different way. What are your top five supports in terms of ranking? Uh, quickly, Horse Guardians. Um, number one is definitely Athena, I think. I really like Athena. She's my favorite guard. I play her on a really high level. Um, I think she's really fun. I don't die a lot on her. I always perform really well on her, so I like her a lot. I like her kit. It's hard, right? Number two would probably be... I know. Like, I want to say Jep. Yeah, probably Jep. And then I would say Sylvanas. I enjoy Sylvanas a lot. I'm surprised Sushi's not kicking off about Jeb. And... <laughs> Bacchus is really fun as well. And Xing Chang. Yeah, Xing Chang probably before. Like, So, I would go Athena, Xing Chang, Bacchus, Jeb, Ares. There you go. And then if I would have like troll supports, I would go like Isis is really fun to play in support. <laughs> but I well, found, you know you um, can give aura protections. Fall support is so fun as well. Actually, have, you tried, um, have you tried have you tried Nox? No, I haven't tried Nox, Nox but I support tried, is actually fun. We me and Shaggy we tried uh, Nasha uh, Savannah's lane in scrims and we won. Who was so the was... who was the support in that lane? Um was it the Sylvanas or was it the Naja? We tried it both ways. So we oh, had okay. Sylvanas ADC and we also tried it with Sylvanas support. But it went best when it was Naja ADC. But that was, that was the fun day. So yeah, that's that's probably my list. There you go. I can just imagine it now. If you ever faced Paradigm again, you just did the absolute troll comps. You'd have Naja Sylvanas versus, I don't know, Kabrak and Gep or something <laughs> yeah. in the duel. Kabrak and Gep. Hey, you never know. We may see that when the Chinese teams come over. No, we'll see. Well, we'll see a bit of Anubis. <laughs> oh, most likely. Don't isn't the um that that guy on one of the two teams likely to come over? Yes, he is. In Knight, um, who was the person famed coming into the Anubis. Lord, coming into the Swipe World Championship season one for his Anubis, he got it banned against him a few times. Mm. And and then I, he then actually picked up Kabraken and nearly got first blood on Boosh. Yeah. I remember, oh, yeah. that, dude. I remember that. <laughs> Nearly is the key word. Nearly. Mm. Okay. Nearly. Uh, what else is there? Well, there's another question. Uh, will we ever see a Yana support in SPL? Uh... More specify you playing Yana in, yeah. in the SPL. No. Dennis just fits better in other roles, and he's probably going to be banned most of the times. So wasting him in support wouldn't be the best idea when I like so much other support. Although it it is a fun support to play. You have zero CC apart from your portal, and, a uh, slice, and you do have no you have no engage. Mm. I don't know. You just run at someone and try and pull them, which is like really hard later into the game. It's it, it's it's kind of really bad. Well, you do, well, you do what Nasha support does, which is you build sovereignty and go, look, I'm the support, and then just build damage from there on in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what you do on Force as well. You just go, like, stuff or Urchin, and it's straight into Jordan's Brawlers, just go ahead. Okay, right. I think that's, that's done for the questions, then. Yeah. Oh, wait, no, we got another one. Uh, where is it? Okay, this is the last question we have a look at it, because uh, multi-vandom can't think of anything else. Um, what is your favourite kind of ice cream, following on from your pizza question earlier? Alright, let me find the song first. The song? Um, yeah. We, ju- we just need <laughs> to know what to send you in care packages for Christmas. Yeah. Pretty much. Pizzas and ice cream just raining <laughs> for the sky. Alright, this is good. Okay, you guys ready? I'm ready. I'm gonna put my mic into the thing. Hopefully, we're not copyrighted. <laughs> I hope you guys can understand this. Um, let's go. Yeah, that says Ben and Jerry. Oh, okay. Okay. Let's go take it again. Ben and Jerry, guys. Okay. <laughs> like, the cover picture of this song is, like, actually disgusting. <laughs> well, I can give you a uh, permission in chat, so I'll just link it. No, <laughs> it's, it's a Danish song, it's, like, really bad. There's this guy who's, like, famous for singing shit. Alright, you can go. give me permission. There you go, you're permitted now. You can, uh, 
Post it in chat to your heart's content. There you oh, go. Delete link. No, it's available for me. It's fine. Okay, so it appears <laughs> I found out. Um, it gets deleted on Microsoft Edge. It doesn't get deleted on Chrome for me. Oh, okay. <laughs> cool. Okay, there you go. That's a, a weird one. <laughs> but there you go. So your favorite ice cream is Ben and Jerry's. Yeah. There we go. Really ben and Jerry's really good though. Yeah. yeah. Fish is. food's really it good. Is. Fish food. Sorry, fish food's one of the best ones. Mm. In my opinion. Yeah. There we go. It's pretty good. Okay. Uh, uh, Adrian, I think you may as well want to link in. Yeah, and it's a different people are having the issue. Uh, I'll change it in there now. So. Uh, yeah, I, I, I can't see the link because I'm on uh, Microsoft Edge. There you go. I have permissions because I have the sword. So we're all good. Yeah, he, he can fight sword. off me, but... There you go. Yep. Mubot, Mubot can fight against me. Exclamation box sword. <laughs> sword. <laughs> <laughs> I have like this command in my chat, like if you want the sword, go buy one of the blacksmith or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> nice. 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 It's dangerous to go alone, take this. Oh, yeah. like, take, take the sword I have there, the Minecraft sword. Yeah, the yeah, diamond yeah. sword. <laughs> I don't have, um, I don't have a command for that, because I, I don't really mod that many people. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. But just when someone like, hey, you know me for like half a year ago, mud me, please. And like, one of my mods just threw exclamation mark sword and like... If you want a sword. Oh, I'm leaving. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that, that's being kept now. My yeah. job is done. Yeah, you need to put that in, AJ. Oh god, so, yeah. no. That's another command I've got to add. <laughs> so uh, I, I think that brings us to the end of the Q&A and therefore, by the looks of it, that's the end of the show. Mm. So uh, a very big thank you to our guest this week. Both conspiracies and Mirzi, definitely the youngest guest we've had on the show. Mm -hmm. uh, but definitely a great guest. It's been a pleasure talking to you, sir. Thank uh, you. Would you uh, like to sell yourself? Where can we find you and stuff like that? Um, so my Twitch name is in chat. It's like not a Mirzi, it's Emilio Witch with a weird O instead of the zero instead of the O. And uh, Twitter, it's at Emilio LC underscore Emilio. YouTube, uh, I can't. Whatever, just search for a on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> you guys can have free clips coming up. You can have a really sick Savannah's gold fuse heal where I steal it with my AA in a in a show match against really good players. And then you're gonna have me explaining why we killed a DC. And then there's like a clip of me stealing like back in the good old days where you had hug free. Me missing my hog free first, then Kumba owning someone, and sealing it with the Kumba all that goes down. That's cool. That's <laughs> and then cool. that's that. It's just like not that good content, but just search for Emilzy. It's it's awesome. There you go. So if you want to find him, search for Emilzy. I'll have to try and find that and link it when we get a chance. <laughs> <laughs> we have also had one of our regulars, uh, the lovely Sushi. Now, would you like to uh, sell yourself? Yay. Actually, don't I... don't don't do what I just said. Would you like to uh, Would you like to promote yourself you on the said. channel? Like, what is this dude? Don't worry um, about it. You can follow me over at Sushi Nur, like you said it. I'll link it in chat. I just, you know, I, I actually call my qualify myself as a ship poster now. So if well, you want to follow, you can. But you, I just like post random stuff. And... You are cool with Dandy and D Freddy. It kind of yeah. Uh, it kind of I mean, that's that's thing. what I get for being friends with them. You know? <laughs> Yeah, that's it. And then we've got uh, AJ, who's been on production this week, the regular on the show as well. Would you yes. like to uh, promote yourself? Um, yes, you can find me on Twitter, at Alpha Jackal. You can also find me on Twitch, AJMB1995. If you are here right now, if you're listening to this live, give me a follow. It would really, really help out. Thank you very much. There you go. And I've been Dark Eye Free. You can find me on Twitch, Dark Eye Free. Twitter, Dark Eye Free, and YouTube, Dark Eye Free Gaming. If you are listening to the show live, we do have our Twitter account, Pantheon Podcast. Uh, actually, if you listen to it on the on the online version as well, I guess that works as well. But uh, for those of you who do not know, we are on iTunes. You can find us just to a search for Pantheon Podcast. It will say no response, no results, but there are. We're like the fifth one down, so go take it, check us out there. And you can also find us on SoundCloud. For those of you who want to download properly, who don't have iTunes, you can find us at uh, on Dark Eye Free because I'm an idiot and thought that changing the name to Pantheon Podcast would work. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. Big thanks to everyone tuning in. Special thanks to Emilzi for being kind enough to appear on the show. Thank you again, sir. Yay. With the hearts uh, going on there. There you go. Uh, uh, but yes, that's uh, been the show for this week. Thanks for tuning in. Have a very good evening, everybody. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.